this is gonna be, in my opinion, the downfall. They lost a 3v14 in control. A, a real candidate for like an all-star of the season and one of the best players. And it's criminal that his talent is being wasted. Dashy. Great. Here we go. Might be, again, the best they are in the game. Welcome to Dope Check episode nine with me, Ace the Stocksman. We got Tactical Rev and we got the EU GOAT Trey Zero. Today, we have a lot, lot, lot to talk about. An excited weekend of matches and exciting weekends of upsets and some narratives being really boiled in. Um, how you guys doing? What's going on with you, Rab, Trey? What's going on? What a weekend, Ace. Welcome back, everyone. Tune into the show yet again. I mean, drama, great storylines, actually good matches. Like, it's a trend at this point in the season where we have a shit ton of online league matches. But thankfully, they're actually worth watching at the moment. Um, and I think looking going forward to the mage, obviously, in a few weeks' time in Miami, it's shaping up to be actually fascinating. Because there's some teams that were trash that are getting better. Some teams that were good-ish that are absolutely falling off a cliff and they're going to get roasted into oblivion today. <laughs> and then it feels like we have a, a proper top four again, right? With New York making a bit of a resurgence as of yesterday. So, yeah, really difficult to call how the league is going to look in a few weeks' time. Absolutely. Well, scary. Scary. I think... I think after these weekend the matches that or you know these matches that just come it's hard to tell who you, you can't rank anyone below the top four and i i genuinely feel so sorry for minnesota to be honest with you because <laughs> they would have been they would have been the top four but i don't feel sorry <laughs> you get what you deserve baby what the fuck Hey, hey, Rab, this guy, we'll Rab's ready. Rab, Rab's, got, Rab's got something against the Minnesota Rocker camp. I think it's just to cheese me, mozzarella, provolone, and just to push, you know, beat me down while we're down. It's all good, man. Don't worry. I, to I, be I, fair, I will, I, I will say we have all got our own, you know, beefs. I don't know what Snoopy's done to you, Ace, but <laughs> you and him have it. No, you no, him got I, some I have, beef. I, yeah, I mean, he, he did some work this week, so I definitely have some praise for him, but let's, let's, before we jump into the matches and all that stuff, I know everyone's foaming to talk about that. There are some other COD landscape drama issues to talk on first, so let's hop into our first topic, uh, COD hackers, the shittiest people in the entire community, the ones that we all want to choke slam off the top rope, you know, ah, tombstone pile driver, gah, all of them. We had Nate Shot publicly kind of coming out and talking about them. So let's jump to the tweet and see, uh, you know, what he said and, and reaction to it all. Yeah, I mean, Trey's probably best positioned to comment on this, really, right? Like, <sighs> playing a lot of ranked, I'm sure it's been frustrating you. Wait, what the fuck? Why, why am I catching a stray? Like, I'm not playing ranked all day, too. What the hell? What, what is this stray that I'm catching, Rab? <laughs> I didn't actually mean that to be a stray, because I know you are as well. But I trust Trey's opinion a little bit more. All right, fair, 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 fair. <laughs> yeah, what, what's your so, reaction, bro? I mean, you know, ever since it moved to PC, it's always been an issue. But I, I genuinely, because I played a lot of rank play on Vanguard too, and there was hardly no hackers on Vanguard, like whatsoever. Um, and I played, you know, ranked every single night. You load up, you know, you compare it to now to, to Vanguard, you load up a ranked game on PC now. I'd say you probably played, if you play 10 games, I'd probably say you get five or six hackers, you know, out of those 10 games, which is, you know, like I got a very expensive PC down there. Guess what? I play, I play ranked play on PlayStation 5 now because it's just, it's literally impossible. Um, what are they going to do about it? Probably nothing because they make a shit ton of money off of it. If you want me to be honest with you, you know, if they ban a hacker, guess what? He has to buy the game again. Does the hacker care? No, he's fucking, he's got a shit life and he hates himself <laughs> and he projects that on everyone else. So, um, you know, just, you know, if anyone does come across the show and hack, all right, 
my mum would absolutely beat the living fuck out of me if she found out I use red boxes on COD. I'm just letting you know. All right. So you get a life, a serious, like, honestly, it, there's just, and it's the people, yeah. And I've noticed this, especially in the UK, a lot of scousers. All right. I can't trust a single what? scouse person. A yeah, lot no, of what? No, no, I'm dead. Wow. I'm hey, for the you, US, right, can I'm, you I'm, translate? What's a scouse? Uh, someone from Liverpool. Okay, we're th okay. We're talking about a specific city of people. All right, bet. Yeah, no. Listen, every person that's from from Liverpool, yeah, in rank play, hacker. Can't trust any of them. We're <laughs> just bunching up wow, entire city of people. That's, that's fucking crazy. wild, bro. I know, I know. But like I said, like the the nature shots right. Honestly, if they genuinely sorted out rank play or like sorted out the hacker situation, it would be, it it would make everyone's life better, make it easier. But the thing is is that they use their own anti-cheat and it's shit. Yeah. It, it don't do nothing. You look at Vow or something like that, you know, the cheaters get dealt with like that instantly without, you know, with no care in the world. But in COD, it just seems like it, even, even um, you know, the pros have a have a contact where they, where they, where they message them uh, the player ID so they get banned and stuff like that. I've sent over a hundred names to this one particular person guess how many people have been banned two and i'm on one hand probably that yeah because the guys that are literally spin button me left right and center when i was playing pc they're still on the top 250 they're still <laughs> running it up they're still <laughs> they're still taking the sr so you know appreciate you know them saying like oh you got to contact you got to contact it no we don't it, it, we don't it's okay i i'm gonna I'm a come at this with a with a interesting angle of just sometimes i think a lot of the pros and the people with the biggest voices in the community will jump ahead and say that a lot of people in iridescent or the top 250 are cheating but we've that the kind of biggest issue is that there's times when they're wrong and it blows up in their face in the community's face like we've had i think i forgot the kid's name exactly but it was a college cod kid who got called out um in ranked for cheating but he actually was not cheating at all and then people were coming for his head reddit was talking about him and he, publicly i mean if a pro comes out and says you're cheating and you're not i think it, it's a bit you know it hurts your credibility it hurts your standing in the community and it can really you know mess up your chance yes i'm all about getting rid of hackers i'm all about getting rid of the guys who are blatantly aimbotting the diamond ones you know diamond one rank you know level two or something like who's clearly hacking his way through all about it but uh it really comes down to the devs it's, it's a similar conversation to the committee we need for gas right we need the devs to come in we need activision to come in set a standard for the anti-cheat set a standard for warzone and for competitive side that can figure out when people have files in the game that are being used that shouldn't be there and it's even worse because recently on the tl i think a lot of people saw this too someone exposed how to cover your monitor cam uh with hacks like how to how, being able to stream uh, and show monitor cam with hacks loaded in um and he got it out of one of those hacking discords so like we're in a really bad state as a community hacking discord bro yeah yeah there's, there's, did you did you did you guys see that did you guys see the eu uh elite qualifiers did it look insane like, or some crazy stuff happening? Uh, well, listen, the sky or whatever. Was there was there was like three French teams caught hacking. <laughs> were, were, were the scours going crazy? No, no, no. The scousers don't really play challenges. The scousers don't really play challenges. It's more yeah, the of the French. French. The scousers. That's what you gotta watch out for. Honestly, that. yeah, the, the they're all hacking. Honestly, every single one of them. All right, if you're from <laughs> France or Liverpool, you're hacking. But no, on a real, the the lengths that people are going to hack right now. Um, this one guy was, he has two monitors directly next to each other. One's a curved and one's a gaming monitor. And he had a monitor cam on his curved monitor on the left. All right. Mm -hmm. He's playing on the right. <laughs> yeah. So no he's projecting way. his game. He's projecting yeah. his game on the he's left got, like, whilst playing on his right. So yeah. he sat there like this. Yeah. Whilst the monitor cam's pointing at this monitor, he sat there like this. Yeah. And someone's like, oh, you got a fake monitor cam. So he shows it, he shows this monitor cam, and his legs are like pointing this way while he's showing <laughs> that way. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> 
and Dude. the monitor he it, you know they were like oh you know it's it, you you're lying like show your video setup or whatever like that and he just shows one monitor and the monitor he shows to bit yeah the monitor he shows that you know for his proof is the straight monitor whilst his monitor cam is a fucking curved monitor like it's fucking it's a joke it's a disgrace you see oh, yeah, that's some happening of them are so yeah. blatant and then the shit doesn't get done it's like I don't know. The don't even get like obviously. Obviously, we don't talk about challenges or anything, but these face admins are fucking terrible as well. <laughs> I don't know. I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw that the cup this weekend. You probably saw this tray. Map yeah, one, what? map four were both Karachi hardpoint, yeah. and then in the second round, map one and map four were both Skid Row hardpoint. And I'm like, did you did you see who won the cup? Played... <laughs> no, did you see the final? I've already won. I couldn't fucking tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought you were going to say, to be honest. I don't know. <laughs> I was so shocked. Wait. It, uh, overall, got, I, overall, I will say that the state of anti cheat in this game after... Well, how, many years, how many years have we been begging for anti cheat at this point? How many years have we been on PC COD? Since CDL started, basically? Uh, one year after CDL, since Cold War, yeah. Since Cold War. So what? Three, we're now four years in? And we still yeah. do not have a proper anti-cheat when COD is one of the biggest games in the world. And Warzone itself is the biggest battle royale in the world. I mean, we, do, we, we, I mean, we just need to chalk it up because we've had a broken cruise missile for five days. Um, right, with, I'm saying, I don't see any light at the end of the tunnel, but we, we, like, we want, we want anti-cheat. We can't even fix the cruise, but we, yeah, exactly, we, man. the cruise missile oh. has been broke for five days. All right, I hop I'm, on. I have a little. Have a, work. Have they fixed sub base contest uh, yet? No. no, no. I think that's no. still broken. No. Right? No, yeah. so listen, I hop off after a nice day off, hop back on, I'm like, oh, the cruise is surely fixed. Call it in. <laughs> like, it's... Like, fair play, Slitcher, but they've tried to make an attempt, but they always have the excuse, right? All the devs over Christmas, New Year's, they're like, oh, well, sorry, guys, we can't fix it because it's holidays. But no excuses right now. Like, come on, let's get it sorted, boys. Ranked, like, okay, cheaters, it's just, I don't see them getting that done because they brought this ricochet in thing in they thought it was going to work even in cs and valorant like proper games that take it seriously cheating still happens it's not on the same level but if riot games and valve can't fully figure it out then sure as hell these boys can't figure it out and like cs and and uh, valorant free to play right from the base you actually make an interesting point trey that you know, Activision looking at their bottom line thinking, well, if we have like 1% of the population that hacks and we ban them every six months on a nice little cycle, they'll keep buying that. The, the, the cheating know, is a marketing gimmick? Is that, up, is that what we're saying here? Cheating well, I mean, in I mean, is a marketing I mean, gimmick to make more money they're... by Activision. That's, a, that's well, an insane listen, stat line. Wait, right wait you got to look, look at it like this, Ace, as well, yeah? All right. If they ban the cheaters, they have to buy a new game. Yeah. And the people that don't want to play against the cheaters will then go buy a console and then have to buy the game again on console. This is such a. This is the most conspiracy. This like, is more of a conspiracy. No, than... but okay. It's not. It's, okay, a, it's not really a conspiracy. Though. That they're trying to shut down the people, but it's the same thing with skill based matchmaking, right? It's like they clearly have data that in that tells them that that's better for player time. Um, and even I don't know. My feeling is that it's not good, but I don't know. They seemingly believe that it is. So. They can say one thing publicly because they say they're trying to shut down the cheap manufacturers and stuff. But yeah, I don't know. It's got to be a guy who works at Activision, like one rogue developer who's just sending code out. You know, like he he's getting paid off sending code out to some guy on the side. You know, some some guy in India is cracking the code some and, and sending. Yeah, some scouser dude. Some scouser <laughs> dude in Liverpool is cracking the code, paying off the Activision dev and building out hacks that are constantly updated oh. through anti cheat. That's that's what it has or, to be. Or they've paid some shit GFX artist to make a ricochet uh, a ricochet logo, yeah, and it doesn't even fucking exist. And they've just <laughs> said they've got an anti cheat in. Um, my point is, yeah, let's be real. COD is the biggest game in the planet. Yeah, I mean, Call of Duty is the biggest game in the world. It's not even it's not even close. If they genuinely wanted to do something with the anti cheat, they would. Uh, you know, They've even had if they said now uh, to prove that they care, I think. 
they've had enough time to show that, that you know, I th- we got people running around on Warzone with unlimited grenade launchers like we're playing MW2 back on PlayStation 3. The good old days. It's, you know, <laughs> it, it's actually hilarious, you know, and people are sat there. I mean, how many times do you see a pro complain about cheaters on ranked play or something like that? Like, pros can't even play ranked play. Yeah. They can't hop on a console like like a content creator or something like that. they got to stay on PC and practice. They can't even play ranked play. So, you know. Oh, I, I'm a, I'm, I kind of have a separate question, though, about ranked and stuff. Is Do you guys think that ranked killed eight? Um... I mean, no, because we still played right. We still played eights. Um, we still played eights on Vanguard and stuff like that. I just think, honestly, I'll be real. I think, I think people have just lost the passion to play eights and play. That's what Slash has said on the flank yesterday. He what basically he say? said that. Well, he said that eights doesn't happen because people ain't, ain't they ain't grinded. They just they don't want to play it. They don't like the game. Yeah. So that's my that's thing that happens. happens like. And then before champs, they're like, oh, final push, final couple of weeks. It's time to get the eight scared again. I'm like, oh my God, are we like, I just, we played a uh, shit ton of eights. We, we played a shit ton of eights back on Vanguard, like a lot. And then you got to look at Cold War too. There was a lot of Cold War eights and stuff like that. People just don't like the game. You, so you think between stage one and stage two, just the change of spawns or maps, whatever it may be, have messed with people that much that they don't want to go hop into bpl or hop into eights like normal i i think no i think i, th- I think, I think people's love of the game i think people's love of the game's just gone I th- bro, to be honest i, then, I, th- I how, think people's passion is just gone how does that make sense if they're sitting there on on stream for four or five hours a day you have you know guys like uh ag uh yes you know sam i mean sam's a content creator at this point but like i see ag on playing at night I see some of the phase guys on, like Abizi sometimes on days off or post, you know, post practice they're on, but there no one's playing eights, which is really weird. So I think there's not a lack of love for the game. People just jump on once rank comes out. I feel like that happens most years. Like we're always waiting for a ranked ranked play. Eights will pop a little bit, but once rank comes out, everyone just wants to stream, kick back, not you know, not try hard. I think it's not the passion for the game, but the passion to be the best. I think is gone. Ah no! Uh, like I said, I'll go back. I'll go back to my Vanguard point. Rank play was out, and eights were still popping, popping on that game. If I can, like make a, I, if I can make a graph, the graph goes eights, 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 BPL up, 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 up. Rank play. This game, out. yeah, for sure, hundred percent, hundred percent on this game, right yeah, for off sure. the cliff, you know. But I, but I also think it's easier to chill on rank play than it. You know, you can't chill playing eights. Oh, hundred percent. That's why I think it's like the passion to be the best is gone. Not the passion for the game. They still want to play. They're still grinding ranks. No, no, they still want to compete. Yeah, hundred percent. But like playing scrims every single day and hopping into a sweaty eight when rank play exists. You exactly, know? exactly, exactly. I, 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 like I said, when I say when I say people's like passion like that's gone, it's like how I, you know, hated scrimming. My passion for scrimming weren't there. But you know, get me on the fucking main stage or in a sweaty league match, and I'm I'm locked in. <laughs> but. You know, you catch me scrimming three sets a day and then I'm, I'm S&D at 7 p.m. You know, I'm getting ready to... <laughs> Where's the vodka at, you know? A couple <laughs> shots, like... I've How got much a lot of this, you reckon, is part of the spawns? We can have a look at some of these scrappy tweets, Ace. Yeah, yeah, I was going to jump in and him the saying... Game, yeah, saying the game's awful. There I don't know... Okay, Trey, did you ever get fined when you were a player? No, I don't think fines really exist that much anymore. MW, like, I feel like yeah, the first year. Thinking. The first year they did, and then. Because Scrubby tweeted what? this, and people were like, oh, he's getting fined. But I doubt it. I don't think they care anymore. To be honest, yeah, well, you see, the check. issue is, it's what it's, it, it goes back to that whole, like, we won't get into it, but that, that whole scump hex thing yet. Like, everyone hates COD as it is. Yeah, so why make it worse? All right, imagine Scrappy gets fined and he tweets out, There's not like I got fined for this. Guess what? They all get fucking roasted again, you know? Like, yeah, was there to gain that point? Yeah, like, do they? I mean, you know, I'm sure if they find every single pro for saying no shit the game was, they could probably fix anti cheat, but <laughs> um, you know, it's it's becoming an issue every year how how you see all the pros tweet about spawns and it just goes to show that we're we're still in this time where Activision don't give a flying fuck about you know competitive um 
especially with the uh they released you know didn't they release like all the qa testers for for the, the, this Slack year too yeah yeah and you no can and the you, game bloody don't work yeah and you can just you can just tell you know they that you can just tell how it is you know you load up a new update whole game's broke again <laughs> um <laughs> every time i swear they drop an update and it's like oh well custom games are broken or wars are yeah. broken or ranks broken no I, and, i'm go ahead you, no no you can go I'll, 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 I, I just want to yeah. say that the game needs to be fixed you have people losing competitive matches that you know are for placements for champs uh placements for this miami stage you know really critical points are going away because developers do not care about changing spawns properly uh these these matches can't be consistent which thereby translates to competitive if random things are happening that's if, if the best player in the world two of the best players in the world scrappy and slasher are complaining about your spawns it's not the players that don't know what's going on these guys are some of the best in the world it's your game is messed up sub base uh, invasion need to get fixed asap rocky by developers by activision in order for them to be playable in, a, in for these next couple weeks uh to be actually like viable or make sense i think we're gonna see a lot of weird upsets happening because now you know you have rio a lot of teams don't want to play that and now people are seeing the cheese that is sub base and some teams especially middle middle of the pack teams can take maps off these better teams because of a random spawn we saw that happen to rocker we saw it happen to a few teams on invasion where, where they didn't lose end up losing invasions Here a little more consistent Here comes the justification i'm not i'm simply saying the game <laughs> needs to be fixed because i think this stage if they don't change something we're gonna see a lot of inconsistent play and the game is getting less competitive because of these random spawns that we're seeing on maps like invasion and subbase well let's just let, let me just jump in real quick breaking news rank players down again so that's uh... <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me? No, yeah, rank players down again. Someone just put it in the chat. I've clicked on a few streams. Scump is playing Pal World. Octane is about to load into a 10v10 mosh pit. Um, I also just got a beep. I, I also just got a beep in my ear because my my PlayStation still turned on, and I just clicked on my OBS to check it because I'm not on the monitors. And um, oh, it, the servers have gone down again. Uh, you gotta love uh, you know, it, 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 couldn't company, it, really. it couldn't happen at a better time. And I was just about to say this too, especially with like all like the 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 hacking and um servers going down and what we're talking about. You know, we got Scump Live, we got Octane Zuma, you know, um methods, nade shot. Yeah, that you know, they're pulling like, you know, all together can say like, you know, 40, 50k viewers and mm -hmm. You got you got to think, yeah, that you know those forty k viewers, fifty k viewers are all sat there watching one of like the most biggest names in Call of Duty getting hacked on, servers not working or anything yeah, like that. Yeah. You know, it it. How can you as a company sit there and just laugh at that or just like let it happen? It's actually so embarrassing. Especially, it's it's not like we're dealing with like some indie developer either. We're talking seventy five billion dollar Activision. You know, biggest game in the world, triple A game, everything like that. I think it's kind of keep rank play up for longer than a day. I guarantee you Warzone's and up and running though. I guarantee you Warzone's up and running perfectly. I think I think Warzone rank plays down too. Apparently it's dead as well right now. Yeah. Oh yeah. my yeah. god, no, the and, whole and, company's falling apart. And, the building's on fire. And the funny thing is, yeah, I'm still gonna load into rank play whenever it comes up, and my cruise missed are still gonna be broke. <laughs> 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 so you know it's like I said, it couldn't have happened at a better time that we're talking about it. It's embarrassing. I'm I'm going to X Defiant. Speak, bro. Speaking yeah, of, come on. Go ahead. Speaking on embarrassing though, like, yeah, the game is the game is kind of ass right now between stage one, and stage two. You have some pros that are obviously enjoying stage two. I think, you know, NYSL could be a team that you could say is enjoying stage two a lot more than stage one. But I want to jump to embarrassing. Because we had a moment that blew up the TL and everyone was reacting to it. So I think we got to open this up and just watch oh it for my. ourselves and, and, and go about it. Uh, some of you guys definitely saw this on TL. It was Asim tweeted it out. Let me jump to the main screen. So apparently, in, in between, in their match, up 100 points, a ref started to do dishes live during a match and, and did not mute out. So let's take a listen and... 
chat like if you haven't seen this it's absurd it's absurd Bring me stop topping you guys go stop go, still go, in the go, same quick. spot yeah he got me got me there's two guys i'm going back out pitching gosh pitching gosh hydra hydra pitching someone's mic should go back out free me should fucking mic please go on back up guys top fire top fire top fire weak top fire there's two one's absolute Bring me stop topping you guys go stop still in the same spot yeah he got me got me there's two guys there i'm going back out pitching gosh pitching gosh hydra hydra pitching Someone's mic should go back out. Free, mute oh, your yeah. fucking mic, please. <laughs> <laughs> you hear Asim react. He, at least his so, breath. Mute your fucking mic, please. Very. So nice. listen, I wanna, I, I wanna, I wanna chime in on this. It's happened to us before in Vanguard. Not with some guys doing the dishes, but he'll have an echo or something like that. And you know, we've said it too. The funny thing is, as well. <clears throat> you know, just just want to touch on that clip too. Everything is wrong about it, like the names and everything like that. That's not the official CDL stream before anyone, you know, roasts the CDL for how bad the graphics were or anything like that. That wasn't the official CDL stream. That's just what the players get sent. Did you when, guys um... get this when you were playing? What, with the referee? Right, did you get... No, nah, but I mean... Because, I mean, they send them to the teams, right? So they get their... Oh, comms. The, the, the comms? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can request them. Okay. You can request them. Um, so it happened in Vanguard with my team. The referee had his mic muted, and it was just picking up a crazy echo. Um, but the funny thing is, yeah, is like there was a there's a, there's there's time periods and stuff like that where the refs are supposed to be sat there, and if you have a problem with your game, you'll say, "Yo, ref, you know, ref, I need you, ref, I need you." There was one time in Vanguard where we needed our ref, and he muted his mic and fucked off. <laughs> So we had an issue, and we're screaming, ref, 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 you need to end the game, ref, you need to end the game. Not an end game in sight. Not an end game in sight, and it carries on and carries on and carries on. And we're like, so I, I you know, in, in that moment, I make the executive decision. We're like, right, fucking back out. If they're not going to do it, force it. And you can get the map loss for that. Um, And I just remember saying to my team, I'm like, listen. That's a, we'll take the fucking map loss if that's how they want to be because f this is embarrassing. You know the referee is supposed to be there. Well, let's not even call them referees, by the way. Let's call them let's call them carers, all right? Because you know a referee can make an in-game decision, an on-game decision, an on-site decision. They can't fucking do that, all right? They can't. I got told from one of my from from my time back in the day when we when we lost in an absurd uh, game in, against LG when I was on phase. Um. We got told that we won the game against LG, but because of the rules, whatever's on screen is the final result. And I'm being told by league officials that we won the match, but because the game said we lost, we lost. Um, if you guys don't know that story, by the way, Black Ops 4, it was obviously London. Yeah. Um, seaside Control. Those that know, know. We don't need to get into it. Um, yeah. The game was broken. Phase yeah, one, LG lost. I just, LG I, actually won. I just want to speak a, a kind of a, a combining everything we're talking about. How much more embarrassing of a look is it for Activision and the entire CDL? Not only is your game have hackers in it, not only is your game, your servers are going down, not only is your spawns and now, you know, pros are complaining. Now you have a ref in an official sanctioned CDL match doing, you know, embarrassing the entire league. It's another instance of the league seemingly just not caring, Activision not caring, just kind of this willy-nilly, uh, uh, I guess, dismissing of the competitive scene. It's another example. We could all, you know, look at them individually, laugh it off and say it is what it is. But you see the consistent disrespect of the competitive side. Uh, no real, you know, they're not taking care of the issues. These issues are getting worse. The, the, the refs are getting more lackluster. Is that due to layoffs? Is that some of the refs got laid off? Uh, I don't know exactly what it is, but overall, again, with everything we talked about from the start of the show to now, I think it's just a continual pattern of Activision, the CDL. They're one and the same, to be fair, uh, embarrassing themselves and not taking competitive seriously in any regard. I respect that the think, teams like yeah. the Boston just didn't care about this. They were like, you know what, we're just going to expose this bullshit because that's what I was questioning, Trey. Like, I agree exactly what you mentioned earlier is a very good point that if something actually goes wrong in the game, I mean, it used to be the case where, well, what if the game crashes? 
probably you need a referee there to try and you know what if it's quite marginal on the nowadays maybe it doesn't matter because they look at the rule book and they say well it says that despite the fact that it was 250 to 59 it's a full replay because that's all it says so, I, yeah you know. no if, <laughs> if you it genuinely genuinely if you are up 240 to fucking 10 and the game breaks it's a full reset that's yeah actually, because wait, what that's a great true? game and it's like I, well it I think that depends because no, no, I, no. I've heard that, that like, they might they, they might have changed the number on it or something like that. But you, if it, I think you have to reach over like two hundred points, or yes, something it's, like it's, that. it's but, a it's a combined but, over two hundred. If you're up, if you're up one fifty to ten and online, someone told me that that is true on LAN, but online that's not true. What? But that's I don't my point. Yeah, they know the rules. To yeah, be honest just with you. just imagine this. Just imagine this, yeah, you know, 189 to fucking 10, the game lags out. It's like, ah, this is one point under 200, you're all fucked. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's like the referee should be able to make a subjective decision on what makes sense there. But if the referee ain't even bloody there, then, I don't know, I, I find that whole thing just so funny. Yeah, but listen, we got to stop calling referees, they're childminders, yeah, they're, they're really carers, true. all right? <laughs> let's, let, let's be real. And uh, th th clearly they're carers because they're fucking doing the dishes mid-map. Yeah, it's it's a bad it's a bad look all around, right? These are these are supposed to be again. This is the CDL is not some petty, uh, some petty high school run league, right? This is a professional. We have a million dollar league. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah. is a hey, hundred million dollar league. <laughs> where, hey, just imagine refs... NBA playoffs. NBA playoffs. You need the ref there, mate, and he's fucking. He's, the he's ref is talking, talking, he's, talking on the sideline with someone, like just chatting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What are you talking about? It's unbelievable. Getting a, get, get a girl's number or something. Like. Exactly. It's, it's unbelievable. This is, again, we all laugh because we're part of the community. We've, we've seen this community grow from literally being like people getting a ballroom and putting it together to now what it is today. But it's not funny when you really look at it in proper context. It's not funny the fact that a ref for a professional hundreds of million dollar league with, with uh, these teams, these, these names of teams that we've been respecting for years now, Got a ref in there that's just fucking off the entire game. And if they the players needed something, he'd be off in La La Land doing the dishes and not caring about what's happening. This is his job. This is his job in an well, official league. Think, like, I'm yelling from the top of the guy? mountain. Please <laughs> what's, what's help this guy us. Getting paid? Like, is he just on some like I don't know zero hour contract bullshit? Yeah, they got it. They got him on some like uh, on some like nine nine dollars an hour. And if the players want to tip you, they can tip you or something. There's got to be some <laughs> shenanigans happening in the backgrounds here for a guy to be this careless about a job where he just has to sit there and watch a Call of Duty match. That's all he has to do. That's all That's he has to do. Uh, what, what what mics he got too? Oh yeah, it's picking up. So, hey, that, that's got some range, baby. We need to get one. Of unless, those. Un, 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 unless he's got one of those Watch five and one. <laughs> unless he's got one of those five and one built-in setups where he's got an oven to his left, he's got a sink under his desk, so he can you know manage all the games and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. The fuck is going on? You don't. This doesn't happen in any other esport, by the way. Yeah, well, I you know, swear, man. We yeah, yeah, like elsewhere. even even some of the like you know smaller esports like. I mean, I don't really know Rocket what smaller League or than something? COD is. I don't know. Yeah, Rocket uh, League. But that Rocket League, right? I, I, I think COD might be the smallest esport in terms of, com you know, compared to the big dogs, you know, viewership wise and everything like that. And it don't get any better, you know. It. I think it's just funnier that you know players. I think it's hilarious that the players now can just roast the league like at any moment in time with no repercussions because. If for one, like Asim tweeting out that he's not going to get fined, mm -hmm. yeah, makes the t makes the COD League look fucking terrible. Yeah, and even if they wanted to find him, he could tweet he could tweet out, "Oh, they find me when the refs doing his dishes mid map," <laughs> and then they get roasted again. You know, it's yeah, it's at this actually point they've it, just given up. Like the senior have given up with PR damage control, and it's just purely about running it down at this. You point. know, you look at you you look at Rainbow Six Siege. Oh. Look at the event they just put on. Esports is so lit if you do it right. If it's not run by COD. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly. Can, can I make, I'm gonna make a, ran, I'm gonna make a, not a random suggestion, but I'll make a suggestion for Activision and the league. Here's an idea. For your refs, how about instead of hiring randoms, and uh, I apologize if they're not actually randoms, but instead of hiring randoms, maybe consider hiring some ex pros, some challengers players, people with some COD experience who maybe you know, would like to make some money on the side and actually know COD properly and are interested in COD and wouldn't do their dishes mid-map. I'm just saying, there'd be, there's an opportunity there to work with some players that are, 
maybe struggling financially in challenges, right? Because it's not, it's a very tough financial situation when you try to grind through there. Create some opportunity for some people. How about that? I, I, I think it's a much, I think it's a group of passionate COD fans, especially in the competitive side, that would do this job happily. Even some who probably wouldn't even want to be paid, they'd volunteer to do it. And we got people out here who are just running away with some free cash from Activision and taking their job not seriously. There's a lot of people who would take this job and, and do it well. So it's really unfortunate to see for the CDL, the league, and, and uh, for the scene that we want to see grow, for it to be embarrassed continually and continually and continually, uh, time after time. It's kind of, it just sucks. I mean, you could keep everything in-house if you really wanted to. And it would run smoothly, I feel like, you know, even like even when we had this conversation about testing spawns and stuff like this, you could keep it all in-house. You know, I even said to you guys, you know, get I would do it for free just so purely I didn't have to play what they fucking give us. Just so, you know what I'm saying? You know, do they, do, you, do they need to do it for free? No, but clearly they don't fucking care because, you know, that... It, my point is, is that, like you said, they hire randoms or whatever like that. Apologies if you're not a random and, you know, but at this point, you just on your disses mid, you know, mid CDL match. That's pretty fucking big. <laughs> you know, they need those 10 points. Um, and also, like, the way that they were talking about it, as the team said, up 100 points. Like, they cooked the first rotation. And, you know what I mean? Like, there's an argument that they should have replayed the map at that point. Obviously, not going to happen, but you know what I mean? I just, I just wanted. I, I would have loved to. Have, makes I, the call. I would have <laughs> loved. I would have. I would have loved to have seen like, you know, like a like a camera set up like of the referee and what he's doing like whilst the matches is going on, yeah, just plodding along. He, as well. He's probably he's probably in a different room. He's probably like peeked around the corner like that. Oh, the map's still going on. I'm sweet. I've got another few more dishes to do. I, I can get these done. He's like, oh fucking hell, bossing up a hundred. Fucking hell, best start sprinting back. <laughs> he's probably heard a seam screaming ref, shut the fuck up. Like, what the fuck are you doing? He's fucking Pete running. Oh, fuck, my mic's on mute. Sprinted all the way back, darted back there, trying to sort it out. Ah, oh, it's a joke, isn't it? Honestly. What does the ref say to you guys? Like, is the ref in your call before the series saying, like, all right, you know, we're loading it some shit? Like, yeah, well, to be fair, it, in Vanguard, we had some great refs. Honestly, I've never... Had, both refs were, you know, we, we got along fine with and stuff like that. Never had an issue, bar one time where the mic was unmuted, but... You know, echoes and stuff like that happens. This motherfucker's doing his dishes mid-map. You know, there, there's a big difference from an echo to <laughs> someone scrubbing last night's lasagna. <laughs> like, it's a big difference. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, it's a it's an insane thing to see, man. Overall, though, um, I, I don't know. We we should. I think we should jump in some of these matches because this is already getting me a little juice. Seeing seeing you know, ASM seeing these. They're talking in a, in a match setup. Let's jump to some of these teams and. Uh, we have a lot to talk about. There's a lot of narratives, oh, positive yeah. and negative, that have been built out and, and kind of pushed further by this week's of matches, upsets and everything. So should we start with uh, Vegas, maybe? Vegas? Yeah, let's start with Vegas because fair play, you know. I got cooked in my video on the Sunday or whatever the day was they played Toronto because I remember in the morning I said, look, and you said it as well, to be fair. You highlighted this Vegas Toronto series, eh? So I did cook you a little bit for it. But the more I thought about it, the more I thought, you know what, you might be um and i mentioned it in the morning and i said look this series will be interesting and in the same way that phase crushed new york on that high rise search at the end of the weekend that was impressive vegas slam in toronto 6-0 in a search and they nearly won the map four as well it was really cool obviously they got the dub against miami and uh you know i can see trey's eyes lighting up at the prospect of that <laughs> i was very happy yeah <laughs> the, the way that 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 concluded but yeah vegas look pretty legit based on what they've done this week because beating gorillas and beating miami are, okay maybe it's not massively impressive but i think clearly they've made some strides and they are far from the worst team in the league right now they're clearly levels above some of the shit we've got going on down there i uh, will get into that um but Purge is playing better on a sub. I mean, if you look at the last three series Purge has played, he's had a 0.91, like a 0.88, and a 0.91. So it ain't great, but it's enough, to be fair. Like, that, that, that's not too bad. That'll get you by. Someone's a 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9
on on a sub player like that you know teams have won events so, with point nine. So on a sub someone player. someone someone has to do it. you know I team with Joe back in the day rap that guy was you know yeah, exactly we, we we used to troll in our it's team he was the best he was he was he was the best seven point seven you've ever had in your life <laughs> yeah but I think he was to be fair he was no so he was like just, dead serious mm -hmm. hitting the flank you know good times it's a so Poach is much better on the sub and apparently he's even doing some of their like. Um, like his, his comms are apparently quite important to the team and Geo seems to have been I mean Geo should get better every single series so I'm quite high on this Legion team really like I look at the league and I think that they actually could make champs and if you look at their next games actually Ace if you just go click on their profile got you um, look at their upcoming matches because they play some stinker teams wait they actually like, they their have, next four are very easy yeah I mean look at this Boston Thieves Surge Ravens like they could theoretically go six and one here. I don't think they will. They'll probably end up like four and three. But even four and three, like that's a juicy 40 CDL points. That's a juicy winner's bracket start. So Yeah, and that, that, might, that might even push them into seventh, help their champ slot, the, you know, champ slot and a winner's bracket for Miami. It's an overall good, good spot for Legion to be in. But I want to talk about, yeah, specifically the role... The, the roll switch and then Geo coming in, you just see Vegas a lot more comfortable. Like everyone actually feels like they're doing what they're supposed to do. Uh, Dylan has some weight off his shoulders, finally not having to slay so hard, dropping 1.4s and 1.2s and 3s. Uh, Geo has taken a, that slaying, the AR slaying a little bit off of his shoulders. Um, Purge with a sub too on, you know, I want to go to that map one on Rio. Map one on Rio actually dropped a 1.08. So you actually, on a sub map, him and Nero were playing very well in tandem. They do end up losing the map, but you saw the comfortability of them playing. And I think Purge and Nero actually complement each other with subs uh, when it is a 2AR, 2-sub. Two Hyper-aggressive Nero, who's snapping and going crazy. Purge, who's a bit more methodical, plays a bit slower. It's a good actual tandem sub duo when, when it's time for it, right? And Purge also had the, you know, the highest or second highest damage in the entire map one. The Legion team is the sleeper team, I think, amongst them all. Some people want to say Boston, right? They, Boston had a good showing, a uh, one in one showing, but looked promising. I think Legion here, if you look across, even the, you're getting playing against Toronto, a close Rio. They lost, you know, a, a three point loss on Karachi. Control, they did take one round off and a 6 0 in search. If you're looking at this, the only team that was closer to Toronto in this regard that took them to this kind of length, even, you know, in terms of point differential, not maybe not map, map count, uh, would be Rocker. And we have Rocker talking about them in the top four, top five. Legion here have, even, I would argue, even a closer point differential against Toronto. So we got to see them as what's their, what's their placing currently? Uh, 11, ninth? Yeah, currently I think ninth. They might be ninth, so yeah. They're gonna be like yeah. They should shoot up. They should shoot up absolutely to that seventh, sixth slot. And they're the sleeper team of all these bottom of the pack teams to come up and make the biggest difference in stage two. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I, I think we've all been you know so accustomed. We we've all been spoiled really uh, over the years with how good players have been, especially SMG players. You know, we look at a point net point nine one, like point nine two, is like getting shit on these days. <laughs> when really, when really, you know, it's just, an, you know, in my opinion, it's an average sub KD for someone that's running and dying and getting trades and stuff like that. I think it's a respectable KD, um, especially if you're winning. Um, I think we've all, you know. Like you said, been accustomed to the Simper BZs, Kleenexes, you know all those KDs and you look at it and it's like, like I said, we had, we, we used to team with Joe and we never used to really finish series positive, you know, and we used to hundred point club teams in world war two. So if you're playing the game, right, it doesn't matter. Uh, I saw someone in the chat say uh, about, um, he's getting pissed on, but he's making the right kills. Now nah, he's not getting pissed on, but he's making the right kills. Pissed on is like 0 0.6 is, you know, we look at 0.9s now and we're like, oh, he's been he's been pissed on. He's been pissed on. Nah, he's just doing what he needs to do and it's clearly showing. Um they they've definitely improved. I think we've I think we got um I think the updates definitely helped him as well, the patch. Um I think purge uh, not purge, sorry, I think Geo playing on that for a whole month prior to them too has probably helped him out as well. Um, you know, telling them spawns and where people are and stuff like that. Um also, the other teams not liking the update as much with the new spawns as well definitely helps them out. 
I, I just feel like they've just got to keep going on with this mentality. Um, they are still the underdogs. Everyone still like counts them out as well. Uh, but it's nice to see. Uh, it's nice to see four people not on like a top like organization battling it out and still taking like teams like Ultra and stuff like that. You know, to the to the to the wire and you know should potentially be beating them. Uh, you know, if they win that map four, it's finally we have like some sort of dark horses as well where we're like, oh, you know, they're not gonna get, they're not even gonna stand a chance. Um, I it just think it's nice a little to bit see. more challenging to predict series. You know, you got to yeah. think about it. <laughs> it's it's it, like I said, it is nice to see, especially you know, you know we talk about attached two who's had a rough few few years in the CDL coming back and forth on the bench or being dropped or whatever like that. So. I'm a fan. I'm a fan of the Vegas Legion. I'll say it. I'll be the one to say it. I, you know, it's like it's like having like a you know team that you don't support, but you'll always support them down there a little bit on the side, just hoping they come out with a win. Um, I think they're yeah, my Vegas team. Vegas as an organization, like that, they're, they're so blatant in their approach that you almost got to respect it. Like, oh, 100%. Uh, some of the other teams, like Florida, always annoyed me. I don't know, they're Miami now. I don't know that Trey hates them as well. But as an organization, I mean, they used to always annoy. Maybe you don't hate the organization, but, you know, whatever. We'll get into that. It's just my point is, like, some of these teams, they pretend they're serious. Like, Vegas don't pretend they're here to win events. But some of these CDL organizations, like Rocker, are another example of this, to be fair. And to be fair, they did win something at one point. Um, but they, they talk a big game. And then they don't make decisions that are congruent with the big game that they talk. Whereas Vegas, we know what they do. They know what they do. So it's almost like, you know what? You're set out to be 12th. And if you can be 8th, I'm there for it in a way. Um, I don't, you know, the, the guys are likable. Nero is like, I think Nero deserves some credit because he played great this week. He was arguably, could have been like MVP of the weekends, to be honest. Um, I'm kind of surprised a better team didn't get Nero, to be honest. I thought when I saw that he was rumored to Vegas at the time, I was like, is that the best offer that he's got? Because I felt that he'd get some better option than that. Um, it's the inconsistencies. Mm. Yeah, maybe. He's, a, he's an inconsistent player, you know, uh, and I love Nero to pieces. You know, I go, I, I, went, I went karaoke with him. You know, that's a good guy right there. <laughs> you bonded like this but, now. <laughs> but you've got to understand as well, sub players are inconsistent and they do just get thrown around. Um, Especially someone like Nero, you know, seven, seven, eight, eight sends. If he's not snapping, you know, if he's not on point, it's going to be a rough series for him. But he is like one of the people that I do look at when he is frying and he is like top. He is like, if you got that consistent Nero 24 7, that wouldn't surprise me. Like, imagine he just does that throughout the rest of the year. He's going top team 100%. He, he, Nero, but, oh, go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to say, it's just the inconsistency in sub players. You know, like Purge could be dropping a 0.9 all year, winning, a, you know, winning most of the games or some of the plays. There's no one really looks at that these days. It's all KD and, you know, if if you're good friends with the top dogs too. I mean, I think we can all agree with that. When you're watching Nero on the map, his impact he makes and the, the fact that almost every time he slides into an entry... He's usually giving you one almost every time being the first entry player a lot of times. And you see how quickly he can snap on two. Uh, he, he should be on a better team here. Reminds me almost of like a, 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 like a Reese Vivid, right? Because he's just kind of very aggressive. Consistency issues is the thing that lingers around his name. Uh, but he's a player that deserves, I think, with some good leadership and, and the right team around him, could shine absurdly. Maybe this Legion team is that team finally, having like a slower sub with Purge and then Geo and Attach to open up lanes for him. Maybe we do see him uh, be the standout star that we know he can be. Uh, and, and he also has that like old apathy donk mode. Everyone ever remembers that donk mode when App would, around champs time or it was, a cha it was a champs time or a winner's finals, he would just turn into this unkillable machine. Nero has spurts of that, just more, let you know, less inconsistent in matches yeah, yeah yeah exactly right like a little bit less consistently than uh you know one of the best players apathy but nero shows glimpses of that i just think it's finding that right structure structure for him that's gonna let him shine and be the player you know be the player that we all know he can be because he shows glimpses, glimpses of it consistently you know what's funny uh rab the uh you talk about like how these how you know these teams just you know they're just there now how sad is it that, like, you know, you talk about Minnesota being, like, 
you know, how they've like turned into that. At the start, they were like wanting to field the best roster. They want to be the best team in the league. And then like the more the course like carries on, they just didn't care, you know. You look at them and you yeah, they had like the Vikings facility, they had all these facilities, everything like that, and then just Diminish just because, like, it, it, like it's just so expensive. Yeah, well, like, I, I don't blame the organizations in a way, because only some teams can pay the money to get the top players, and I, I understand it. But then also, you look at some of the teams and the roster decisions they make. It's like, let's look at Surge this year, the way they built that roster. I'm like, are we taking the piss right now? Like, are we actually trying? What are we trying <laughs> to achieve with building this team? Like, are we trying to win? Are, are we going to pretend that we're trying to win? Or because at least with thieves, what I respect about thieves is that they say, "Look, we won champs. We won a fair bit over the last couple of years. Budget cuts, and they were very transparent about this. Make it so that we can't get the players that we previously could get. So now it's about a rebuild process, and we're going to start from scratch, and we're going to sign players, and we're going to build around certain players, and we're going to try and build ourselves up a top team of players that we can develop in the same way that Toronto have done with Scrappy and guys like this, and." That's Thieves' plan, you know? Ghosty is going to probably be their talisman for the next couple of years, I would imagine. And they will put pieces around him until they find something that works. And I feel like that's a respectable way of doing it. Um, it just isn't like, I respect the nature, and Thieves were transparent by saying, this is the situation. This is like, you know, we're not... Sure, they want to win events, but realistically, they're not winning shit this year. They knew that. And maybe they won't make champs, but they can at least try. With some of these I mean, teams. I, I, I was just going to say, how hilarious would it be like if the owner of, of Vegas, I, I think his name is Drew, I think he's still the owner, he just comes out and he's just like, I don't really give a fuck. <laughs> I'm going to be real. <laughs> um, I don't really care. Uh, we're fielding this roster. Everyone's on the min. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> You know, because like you, you talk about you talk about how like nature, you, you talk about how like nature is transparent and stuff like that. You know, times are hard. Whatever. Like, man, Drew just comes out. He's like, didn't really want to be in there anyway. Uh, we've probably got one more year of being it. Shout out to the league. It's been a pleasure. I'm but... just catching out that YouTube money. You know, that YouTube deals paid for my team. <laughs> I'm here to you, like, take the paycheck. you know, we've got one of the you know we've got one of the most prolific players. We've got a- attach. You know, he's on the min. We don't give a fuck, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, we're, we're going yeah. for top eight next event. You know, up. if we make champs, we make champs. If we don't, same again next year. Fuck it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like that. exactly. I I get it. Uh, but it's just funny the way the league is, isn't it? I mean, uh, like, I, I say, it it's. I was gonna say it's a, it's the same in every sport, really. You know, every team, every yeah. every team. You know, it's the same in every sport. The, you know, richer teams has the best teams and whatever. Like, I just think it'd be funny to see. We don't give a fuck anymore. Who's the top challenger team next year? We'll pick them all up. We'll go below them in two. We'll see what legal process we can go through to get that sorted <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. Jesus, no European players. Yeah. Okay. What can we? Oh, we can pick. We can pick up four French players and not pay for visas. All right, don't do that. They'll play for free. We'll get them locked in. Um, we're trying to make it so we don't have to pay theory. If we, we're trying to drop theory down to, you know, <laughs> just on a volunteer. What, we have to have a sub? Nah, no subs. Nah, no, nah, nah. We'll, Drew, Drew will be the sub. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it is funny. It is. Well, speaking on the downfall of the org, the org you started with when you mentioned it was Minnesota. So let's jump over to Minnesota and actually see... This weekend, one of the weirdest, I don't know, one of the worst, we, worst. you could say it's the worst or the best. You could say it's right middle of the pack. I don't know exactly how you guys want to start off. I'm obviously have my own objective opinion, and people in chat have been asking about what, what they objective. think of my opinion. It's objective. Yeah, I'm going to speak objectively, but I want you guys to start, and I'll, I'll, I'll take this one in a second. I want to hear what you guys have to say about uh, Minnesota Rockers' performance this weekend. Jordan Gay, I'll, trash, I guess. Yeah, I'll go. Honestly, you know, we have our, we have our Discord chat. And I could not have felt worse for a four set of players in my life, honestly. Um, whatever went wrong, went wrong. And I said it to you guys, like, this is going to be, in my opinion, the downfall to Minnesota. They didn't win these games that they should have won. They lost a 3v14 in control to get reverse sweep uh, swept. And then 
they come out, they lose three. To, you know, we were talking about these, you know, being a top four team, and then they come out and lose to Boston, who, you know, we all don't think are a very good team right now. And I, I genuinely believe this weekend is going to be the, you know, what turns them into a bad team, just because losing like that to especially an optic team that you had pinned down to beat 3-0 to get your vibes up, to get your confidence up, everything like that, to come out and lose that and then to lose against Boston like that as well. I I feel so sorry for him because I know I know how you know I know how it feels to have these like game like you know heartbreaking situations, but I think you know I think we can just say they've got no fucking ice at the end of the day. It, that comes down to composure and as much as I feel bad for him, you've got to win those. There's, there's just you know, there's, there's no other explanation of you've got to win them, and they didn't. And to me, I do feel like this is going to be the fall of Minnesota in terms of our fifth, fourth best team. I think they're just going to drop down, and um, confidence is going to be a, a, a bit of a low. I think we can, I think we can see that from a three-two to Optic Texas, who we deem as the third best team to then losing 3-2 to Boston. So that's where I see him. Man, I mean, what a... I simply can't believe the way that control played out. Like, that situation should be impossible to lose. But... And if that's happening online, then when the pressure's actually properly on, on LAN... This is the question that Ben J. Nassim was mentioning about, you know, Wake, is he a winner? I think the same applies to vivid to some degree like even vivid tweeted about it it was like i just made so many brain dead decisions those last few maps and i'm like well okay i was gonna i was gonna say that he costed them the control yeah he was Um, the one that made the mistake really yeah you know that like obviously you know it comes down to a team play but you know from what i saw they got it down to a 3v14 he he's the last line. All he needs is yeah, he, he he's the last line of defense, and he just jumps out the front window. Yes, yes, yes. You, you know, know he jumps out the front it, window for no reason, and then just wraps back. Doesn't even look. At, doesn't even shoot his gun, and then gets killed for free. Yeah, he like, and you look at that, and it's like you know, you blame the team composure for losing a three v four team, but that's what, like you said, Rab, he has to sit there and make one fucking kill. Not even that. They can't he even just has catch to... it quick enough with two on it. Like he doesn't even. Can do it, but two on the he doesn't even have to make a. He doesn't have to make a kill rap. He doesn't have to make a kill. He can go lay down behind a desk and contest and wait for three of his other teammates for numbers and everything like that. And instead, the motherfucker jumps out a front window, doesn't shoot a bullet, tries running away. I love you, Re. I, I love you, Reese, but that's that's not a winner play. You will the never see that you... in game five. I mean, like it wasn't vivid, really, but. There was that round, because, okay, Optic went up 3-0 in the game five, then it was 4-3, Wake hit the flank, and I have no idea how he doesn't kill Shotzi. But Shotzi's in mid, Wake comes up behind him, and he must just whiff the shots. Like, And even when Shotzi slides into bottom church, you still see bullets whizzing past him that don't connect. He's one shot, one more bullet from Wake on Shotzi there. If he just connects the bullets, they, they, it's 4-4 for sure. But no, it's 5-3, and then they close it out. Um, yeah, wild collapse, to be honest. I think... I mean, there's, I was going to yeah. say, there's definitely some wake agenda in here, but is it, it's not even an agenda anymore. You know... You know, right. this is it. Go on, let's go on uh, before we start. Man. Okay, so we've only been talking about the Optic series, but the, the, we have, the Boston Breach series is another whole other problem in itself, right? But mm. The Optic series, I think, was more criminal, right? It was, it was a lot more criminal... The first two maps, Rocker looked like a top three, top two team in the game. They were waxing, look at, spinning circles around Optic in terms of strat, strats, rotations, real. They made it look easy against an Optic team that looked dominant in it the first time around when they played it a 2-2 two, two split uh, with two ARs, two subs. They looked great in it, but a Rocker made it look like they were just a little playground. Even the control... Yes, there were, you know, a couple rounds were a little off, but Rocker was in control pretty much the entire time until the scam at the end. And I want to point out something. It's, it's the wake, you know, the wake controversy topic, whatever it is here. I, did, I was trying to do the math while you guys were talking, but you guys concluded talking before I had a chance to do the math. 
but he ends up with a 1.1 in the series. But if you take out the control, his 34 and 17 performance, which was a 2.0, if you take that out of this, someone in chat, if you guys could do the math, I think he actually ends up with like a point nine or point eight. Cause map one, he has the worst KD, point nine. Map two, point three three. Map four, point nine. Map five, point five seven. So he actually it's like 42 and 52 or something. So it's like a point eight. So actually, you know, I, I try to give a credit for a point nine, but it ends up becoming a point eight if you just take out a control where he goes 2.0, but they end up losing. He actually fried in the control against Boston as well. Like his control gameplay this weekend was actually solid. And but why do like... you think that is? Because it's, it's, t it's glorified TDM. <laughs> it's TDM. It's TDM. It's glorified because TDM. Because the, oh, yes. the oh, like, bro, I, I promise you, if if the if the CDL was control only, he'd be on the supermax. <laughs> but I never I mean, forget that map he played. I think it wasn't control, but I think it was like, wasn't it Fortress Hardpoint? And he went like thirty-seven and thirteen for the loss. Oh yeah, 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 like, yeah. I remember watching that. I remember that. watching that. <laughs> I don't know, um, that was a control. Spe wait, speaking on awaken I'm, awakening the other series as well, right? I just speak of the control exactly, right? 32 and 23, but we, if you take out the control, map 1, 0.83, map 2, 1.0, map 4.63, map 5.67. So again, it is the control that's saving him, and, and his KD looks better than what it is because of these control maps, and one of them they lost. So here's my overall analysis with this Rocker team. Right. And, and I'm speaking objectively. I know a lot of people will, will not be able to believe that I'm speaking objectively, but this is what it is. The Minnesota the Rocker, the, the, no, the Minnesota Rocker need to win their next match or a change will be forced to be made. Essentially, if you go down 0-4, almost basically repeating your stage one, you could bring it back, but you're fighting against a schedule that's not in your favor. You're fighting against schedules for other teams like Legion that are in their favor. You're setting yourself up for a really bad position going into stage two, which could lead to a major downslide, a slippery slope type of effect into the next stage three, stage four. You're so you close. You know who the next game is against, Ace? Their next game is against, I'll tell you right now. I know. Oh, oh it's against FaZe, right? So it... it it's the whole closeout, right? You're taking every team to, to map five, which is great. So, uh, give Rockers credit for their map count. If they're able to win their next four, or the, yeah, their next four matches, and it comes down to map count, they are, they are taking it for sure against pretty much any other team. So it's just trying to get your back off of the, off of the wall. You know, they, they've stick themselves in the worst position going down zero and three. Um, Wake is a, is a control player, but other game modes, is, it's a really big inconsistency, and it's tough to see uh, him play them out. But they're so close to the edge, right, of, of being a top four team. They're, they're taking, they're taking well, Boston didn't look great, but they still were looking dominant in the maps that they won. Optic was a straight scam. So it's just so many question marks that you just need to get over the hump. You can't give up on the team just yet. But if the vibes, you know, if they lose another match like Trey saying, the vibes might be chalked. You lose too many close series. You know, we saw it last year even with the Seattle team. When they kept losing game fives, the vibe of the team was just, you know, the, the connection of the team, the vibe of the team was just kind of diminishing, and you start to lose faith in each other. I think Rocker are getting towards that side of the fence, so they need to pick it up in this, this series against FaZe. If they lose that, it's going to be a really hectic stage going into Miami. I guess I would say just quickly, like, didn't they start the season 0-4, right? Yes. Like, I think we were toasting them, mm -hmm. and then they turned it around. So it's possible they can do it again, but it's like when you look like this, and it was the same thing with that first stint when they went 0-4. Linz has been great this year. He only has five series wins as a player. Rocco only had five series wins this season, which feels low, given especially what they did at the Major, making winners, making a solid run. Scrappy has the record for series wins as a rookie with 30, and inside 29. And like Linz has five, and we're already a good portion into the season. Not obviously Linz's fault, it's Rocco, but it's like they've had so many series where they've lost in five. And I don't know what you think this is, Trey, because Lamar is an icy player. Like, there's no doubt. And I don't think he's, like, lost the ice somehow. And maybe you believe that. I don't know. No, he's teaming with people that have no ice. Yeah, so I, it exactly. Counter, it, it, just like, counter, it, just, it just counter, like... Yeah. You know, okay, he, he had like one kill the last map, but like, shouldn't he get the best out of them? Shouldn't he? Lamar does have a... Lamar? He, Lamar has the cringy title of the Iceman, but he is very clutch. I think what we got to start looking at is, you know, 
respectfully to Wake, he 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 just looks lost right now. Um, apart from control, now you look at Wake in squad spawn games, he looks unbelievable. You look at him in control, he looks unbelievable. Guess why? Because he knows where they're spawning twenty four seven. Then you look at him in hard point, and it's just a completely different ball game. So. I don't know if he just needs to do extra research by himself, you know, hit the rank play, you know, something like that. But I think seeing all these 0.7s and 0.8s for someone who we, you know, know can drop 1.2s in other hard point games, I think I think it just needs to be said that he he just looks a bit lost in, in, in hard point and... I don't know why that is because he's got Lamar, he's got he's got good players around him. We got Linz, who I believe is you know rookie of the year so far this year. He just looks phenomenal. Um, and you got like I said, you got Lamar who will teach you how to play the game and everything like that. Yeah, I, I I couldn't quite pinpoint it. He just he just looks lost in hard point. You know, like I said, if it was control only, he'd be on phase getting the super max, but. I, I feel like you play that team on hard point and they do look and, you know, obviously you've got Lamar who, you know, consistently right now is playing very, very well. So shout out Lamar and you've got Linz who is playing extremely well. And then, you know what you're getting with Vivid, like you said, sometimes, it's, sometimes but like you, you compare him to Nero Ace. He has those, he has those moments where, you know, he just thrives. He also has like the best accuracy in the league for like fucking three league, three seasons running. So he can obviously shoot. Um, but then you know I look at Awake, and even in that Toronto series, when you make when you makes those plays in the final S and D, and then it just crumbles from there. It just, it, like, it just looks lost. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, it's the search that I'm mainly looking at. It's like, I mean, we're getting slammed six one by Boston on Karachi. Bloody hell! Yeah, that map five. I mean, that's very just useful ugly. at that point. <laughs> I mean, I know that the sub base was dodgy, right? They had the dodgy spawns. But to be fair, Boston benefited from that, and then Rocket benefited from that like a second later. So, um, nah, yeah, tough the, one. The sub base was was criminal. And then, I, should we watch? Should we watch them lose the control in the Optic Bat series, or are we do we should watch that? Or even is it worth it? Even? I mean, we might as well. I, I mean, we, might as well we can we, you, right? can we 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 can just to show like you know how bad it was from my yeah like. Right, you we, know, we'll watch we, it we, and we'll point out the scam that we all agree that Reese did vivid. Um, the scam moment will tell you guys if you guys didn't notice it from this, a lot of people were just kind of in awe at what was happening. But we'll show you the exact scam moment we're talking about with what Reese did in this situation, right? 6v15 six v, six v right now, 22 seconds right, left. Look at this screenshot right here. Like, and the other thing that annoys me about this Optic have zero ticks on B, it's not like they had one tick to find. They have no ticks on B. It should be impossible. You know, just going through this clip, Linz also trolls from not holding an iron. You know, they all yeah. trolled. Yeah, yeah, let's let's press you know, let, let's press play and let's go through it. If you want any any moments to stop, particularly, tell me the timestamp and I will stop and like point talk about it right now. But let's let's play and, and go through it and, and show everyone the absolute criminal troll uh, Brocker. Yeah. You know, no ticks on B. You know. See, my, my first point would be on 11 seconds. Okay, I'll pause um, that. 11 seconds, you've got Linden a 1v1 with um with Pred. You know, he's got top red control. He can't go anywhere. Pred's mid. They have to start making plays. And, you know, he's shooting, he's shooting, he's shooting. Um, You know, not weak. He's got the, he's got the upper hand. And he tries making some, I want to say Shotzi-esque play by, you know, jumping out of a window, trying to flank him, whatever. Just hold your pre-aim. You know, if you play it now, you know, he, he gives up his pre-aim for a second. Pred just re him and kills him for free. And then fuck me, you look after that. And then Vivid's opt out the window for no apparent reason. Uh, uh, in, in my opinion... Go on, you can pause it on the vivid thing, but okay. I just want to add to the lens could also it's three v fourteen. You can run away at this point. Like you don't even have to challenge anything. Oh, you, you, it's three yeah. fourteen. You got you got the one kill already. Just run away and bait his teammate to just come in. You're three v fourteen. You my, should just be alive. 
my point is with, with Lin there, you either hold the pre-aim or you like just pre-aim till you go down the little hole just Here's, so you play your life. Here is the re-scam, everyone. Evan, Chad, if you didn't see this, if you didn't watch the flank, I'm sure they talked about the flank if they didn't. Where then... is bro going? Yeah, look at this. So you have two going down. Pred kills uh, Lin's and Dashy kills, uh, kills Awakening, right? So you have two guys down. Uh, number six, who is accuracy, is spawning up, going down alley. So he's far from the point. All only person left at the point right now is Reese. So this is the scam right here. Also, you know Lamar sat there screaming to him too. Reese, I've got your cross. Reese, I've got your cross. Reese, I've got your cross. Reese oh, goes. Hundred percent. I don't give a fuck if you got my cross, Lamar. I'm fucking me. All right, <laughs> watch. Done, what, 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 what. He's like, watch what I. It, it's three v twelve. No big deal. Shit. I can, I can, I, I can do whatever. So he gets no, listen, out, out of the counter. Yeah. Pops up. And then sees the shot happen, but then decides to peek and gets killed for free. Doesn't hold like, the bus stop, doesn't hop back in the window, just goes to the side to see what's happening and gets picked for free. Like like I said, Lamar's 100% sat there saying, I'm coming to get you across, stay down. You know, Reese could even jump out and just lay on the bus stop, all right? Like, jumping out the window is fine, because you still got the bus stop cover, all right? Personally, I wouldn't do it, but he could just sit there and be like, all right, I'll watch this push. Instead... He's decided to hop out. Not only is he decided to hop out, he's decided to jump off the fucking plat and then turn around, just run into a wall like his controller's disconnected. Yeah. And, and right, then so now, it's classic one when you make a decision, you know it's a bad decision, and then you're caught in two minds as to whether to run away or whether to chill. Yeah, he looks like that. He looks like that baby yeah. gif, you know, when he walks into the room and then just fucking pops a quick Yui, like, and you just, you just, <laughs> you just, you know, and we say, we say, like, you know, they should never lose this. They should never lose this. I'm glad they've lost this. The fuck? In terms of like, look at look at the plays level. they just made. I agree. It, you know, it, it, it's a lot of scamming. Lose, yeah, and, and it makes like, it worse too when you look at number six. You look at Lamar's arrow. Look where he's pushed up. If, if Vivid literally just he could lay down behind this bus stop. He could lay there. Lamar has the cross. He's pushed up. He can see them where they're exactly where they're running. He could put a bullet in them, and Reese could just sit if he really wanted to. If he really wanted to jump out of the point, he could have just stayed behind the bus stop, or even stayed behind the bus and just laid down. And Lamar has the cut. He's putting bullets in somebody. You put bullets in someone. They're one shot. One's dying, and it's a two v ten at worst. And that's winnable versus this three versus eleven. Which we could play it out, finish the clip. It just steamrolls from this moment. Okay, right even awakening streak though. So he decides to streak. This is what people are also debating whether he should have done or not. I actually think that it's fine to streak here, but don't just launch it into the wall for no reason. Like, the, like awakening actually just shits himself when he calls it the streak. I mean, where does he? Where does he I, send I, I, ho I hope he does realize that when you when you put it into the like the front windows it can kill people in the side door too yeah he would have got one but, but 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 this is my point yeah it's like where he said that i wasn't killing shit he just wasted 10 seconds uh, like as a, as a prof as a professional you should know that if you put that cruise missile into that thing and they don't close the door you can still kill people in there and that's you know that's coming from someone that doesn't play professionally anymore that's coming from me who solo queues iridescent and even i know that um, I wouldn't send my cruise missile into the back alley of a wall with no hope in hell of getting a fucking kill. <laughs> it was kill. just wasting time. Like, I know. You know. I used to talk about this as well back in, like, even years ago, because there is a, a skill gap in using kill streaks. There's no doubt. Mm -hmm. But some players don't. Like, I genuinely think it's not a bad idea to go into a custom game and just practice your cruise missiles because it's so important. Like, practice bending that shit in. Like, I mean, it works. For, it it works for everything. Perfect your craft and everything. People. People craft, you know, perfect nades and stuns and... Yeah, it's like uplink you know, throws. Like, you spend hours in a just oh, game just practicing uplink throws. The you amount of times I'd spend... I'd spend, I'd spend four or five hours with my teammate on uplink. We'd listen to music and just throw ones from across the map, see where they land. Yeah, and guess what? We used half of those in our actual competitive matches. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that's why I said... That's why I said, you know... It, me, as someone that doesn't compete, knows that if you put a cruise missile in the front window, you can potentially kill someone side door. Because the door was open, so guess what? I just watched it there. The door was open. Guess what? If he puts it where he should put it, he can get a kill. As much as I would love to see Wake bend it and put it in, as much as I would love to see him do that, uh, I think I think the other scam here, too, again, is even using the streak. To be fair, it's, a th it's at that point, it's a 4 or 3v. I think it's a 3, uh, three optic lines yeah, left. Three, yeah realistically if i'm gonna even if i'm in a ranked game 
If I see three are alive, calling the streak takes about 10 seconds, and it's a B point where they're in the hill, right? You can maybe kill them at that side door, but if they're smart, they're going to run into that back room and play it accordingly to you calling in that streak. Teammates weren't even that close when he does call it in, to be fair, too. Uh, where is it? Where he's calling it in right here. Teammates, when he calls it in, look where they are. So he, he's calling it in number seven. He's still in spawn. He's in dark room. And then you have six and six and five, Lamar and Linz and Ali. And number eight, I think is top AC right now or, or pushing church, maybe top, top AC church. Yeah, top church or bottom church. Like they're not close enough where, okay, I'm going to call my, my streak. They're going to get, they have to get out of hop up alley. They have to get inside and we're going to pinch them or, or, or come from every angle. It's literally, I'm calling my streak. We're not even close. I'm not even attempting to go through the door. It's a terrible streak usage. At least wait till you get closer or let them get one. Let them get close. You get closer at least. So once you're out of the streak, you can be effective yourself. It's just a absolute fuck fest. And look, he uses this streak. Fast forward. Uh, the game's basically over, and look where he is now. He ran out of dark room, he made it to alley, and the game's over. He doesn't have a chance yeah. to be effective in the play at all either. I know, obviously, I'm captain I'm hindsighting, but in, in reality, I wouldn't use my streak there because I know that it's B-point, it's inside, we have 10 seconds, it's better to throw four bodies instead of three bodies at three people. So that's kind of, I think, another I mean, troll of this usage of streaks. It definitely, it definitely is hindsight, but when you look at it back, it's like, you know, they three stack the point. I think it's... I think if you, I think it's three stack the point. It takes sixteen seconds to capture. So if it takes ten seconds to call in a cruise missile, you know, you, and they all stack the hill, it's you know very, very questionable. You know, by the time he's finished using his streak and calling it in, they're already halfway to capping the point. Yeah. Now, if you know, you know, you look at that, you know, they think you you are one hundred percent right. And, um, and effectively becomes a three v three, versus a four v three when when now. You could have been in another angle. You could have called the streak. You could have got the hop up wall, called your streak, forced them inside. Everyone's closer. And if everyone dies, at least you come out of the streak and you're close by to make a play. Like I can hop up and now they have to start running out or they're in the window where I know I'm going to be pre-aiming. It's one of two options. So yeah, I'm captain hindsighting. Sure, maybe I'm cheesing mozzarella provoloning. Maybe. But at the same time, I just think it's, it's a basic play. I really wonder in the comments too, did Lamar, did someone else say call your streak or did Wake just come in and just be like, I'm using my streak because I have it. Because that really would make a difference too, like a, a pretty big difference of whether the decision was a team decision or it was him deciding in the moment to use it and everyone else like, okay, fuck it, I guess here we are. And having a 3v3 versus the hill. So very questionable streak usage, but I think uh, overall, Rocker with a super big troll fest this weekend. Have those glimpses of top four. Have those glimpses of beating a top team like Optic. Um, but always having trouble in those last... Basically, that closing out of the series is just not where they shine. It's just like, I don't know if you can get this level from Lamar. Like, as much as I, as I rate accuracy this year, and I don't want a mozzarella pro lane ace Excuse too much, me? But it's like, from what I've seen over the last couple of years, is Lamar going to keep slaying like this for the next couple of months? I don't know. I'd love to see it, but I, I don't know if, I, if I'm convinced that Lamar can no, make it. No, it, it's, Im it's impossible because... Even the top, like you look at Jamie for example, Insight, he just had, he just had like a you know MVP form event, and he comes back and he's like, it's it's impossible to keep that level of one point ones, one point twos up, um, and that's no discredit into Lamar at all. That's just that's just COD for you. Like COD is so day to day. One minute you fry, the next minute you don't. You, you know um, what? You know what? The, 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 I don't. I I'm gonna say that I understand where it's coming from because it's like, for me to sit here and delusionally say that it's not possible that uh, Lamar doesn't is isn't shooting like that in the slaying category, it'd be dumb of me to not use the evidence of previous games and stuff. But on this team, I think Lamar's a player. Not only is he a, a, a good captain of a team, a good uh, teacher of the game. Uh, but also he plays his role well, right? If the team needs him to sit yeah. in, be a hill kitty, sit in hill, get those important kills, get those objective kills, that's what he's going to do when he has a pred and sit around him. On this team, he's been forced to become more of a slayer role and pick it up while Wake is, you know, uh, playing a little slow. You know, he's starting off the year slow. Lamar's forced to play slayer role, and he's done it well. He adapts to what his team needs as long as his team needs him to be playing at this level and, cons you know, also considering that in this game, the type of player he is, he's reading spawns at least pretty well, and he's generally very 
good at predicting where players are going to be. He's going to get his own, I think, no matter what throughout this year, unless the team super tanks down and everyone's just getting shit on, spat on. I think the trajectory... Bear in mind. I was going to say, bear in oh. mind, I would say that about any player. Fair. Agreed. 100%. I would say, I was like, it's not just Lamar or anything like that. It's every, like, you... you we're dealing with COD here. It's a very day-to-day -day game. Some days, some days are just, you know... And you also got to rely on your team for that as well. That's true. You know, it's I think, not... I think absolutely. It, you, your team do set you up as well. And sometimes, you know, you wake up and your teammate's not shooting as straight as he was the previous day. I think we all know that. This is not me saying Lamar's going to go from dropping 1.1s to a 0.6. Um, I would say the same about anyone in this situation. Sell, scrap, insight. You know, even I've had it before where, you know, IW World War Two. I was looking like one of the best players in the world. And then the next event I come down, I'm looking like fucking I shouldn't even be on a team. Um, it, I would say about everyone and anyone in this situation, it's so hard to be consistent in this game uh, as a call in Call of Duty in general. Um, That's why if you want to be a consistent team, you need four players that can all deliver because I don't expect Linz to drop off. Okay, he should keep getting better, but um, it, it's it's exciting. Linz deserves a lot of credit, man, because bloody hell, we have another cracked out French kid <laughs> that he might just tear up the league. Uh, like Hydra, his first year was good, but he wasn't anywhere he got as better. As he was two years later. My point is though, is like how how long can you go on with picking up slack? Hmm. You know, yeah, that's it, we talk about we, we talk about awakening, you know, not getting these kills and hard point or anything like that. But how long can you go before Lamar can't get him or Linz can't get him or something like that? You know, I, I don't I don't expect Linz to keep frying as he is just because that's just the role he plays and everything like that. Yeah, he's fucking unreal. Let's get it. Let's not let's not change that fact. But it's it, it's just COD is so hard to be that you know, 1.1, 1.2 in every single time. I, I would love for it to happen. You know, I, I love Lamar. I do. I've always, I, you know how much I speak highly of Lamar race. You know, I always say he's one of the greatest teammates I've had. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, people have always mocked him on his slaying ability, but this game, he's got it. <laughs> like, he's just got it. It's it's his it's his game. Um, I just don't know how long they can keep going like it. And we we uh, awakening can shoot. We've all seen this. He shoot. He's been shooting for four years, five years. Yeah. But something clearly ain't going right in his hard point game, and I don't know whether that's because he just doesn't know what's going on or putting himself in bad positions or something like that. I would love to see what a good wake would do in this team and how far they would go. Actually. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, that was kind of where I was getting to, and I think I I touched on that in our preview show, our uh, our dope check pre pre show to the matches. That if you want to check out, by the way, this Friday. Uh, before the matches, one hour before, we're live talking about the matches that are coming up and our top three matches for the weekend. So make sure to tune into that as well. But I was talking about it a little bit then. Um, um, this team is is looking at like top four potential. Yes, they're zero and three. I understand that fully, 100%. But the type of matches they're having, the map counts they're having, the closest of the matches, they're clearly within the top four, or top five conversation. If you, if you don't have them there, then you're not watching Call of Duty and you're a bit delusional. If this is a bad wake, they're playing this well with a bad, quote-unquote, bad wake, I can't imagine how good they'd be playing with a good wake, with a wake that's comfortable in shooting and in hard points getting themselves together. Because once Rocker becomes like a full, three full threat... like three months in now, though, you know? No, no, I mean? but, it's, but to be fair, again, some players take some time. Buts. There's been some players that stage two and if wake look a lot better. Up, this is my point. If wake steps up, I guarantee Lamar gets less kills. Like, it's the same shit that happened with Wake and Skies. Everyone was like, oh, Wake and Skies can't play together because Wake would have one good series, Skies would get shit on, Skies would have a good series, Wake would get shit on, and I don't know. It, I guess yeah, but that's where you got to find the balance, though. Yeah. No, I agree, but it's like, if Wake like, suddenly it, it, plays good... If we're going back and if you're going back and forth, if you're going back and forth between someone playing good and someone playing bad and someone playing good, like, one versus the other, then they don't work as a team. Mm. That's Dyna that. That's where. Issue that's where that we. Point. Yeah. They're, they're, of course, bro. Like uh, you know, I don't. Th I, I feel. I don't feel like Lamar's one of those players that's just gonna. If Wake starts playing well, Lamar's gonna play bad. I just think you'd get. You'd probably get like the standard AR of you know in between a one point zero and a one point zero five instead of a one point one five. 
Mm. You know, that's what I see. That you know, that I I think Lamar is consistent, very consistent enough to do that. And one thing about Lamar, as I say, is that I know for a fact if he's having a bad game, guess what? He's still giving you a hundred and fifty percent in comms and passion and everything like that. He would be if he was dropping a one point three. I think that's I think that's a lot of I think that's a value and quality a lot of pros lack is that when they're getting shit on they don't offer anything else in return whereas Lamar gives you everything in return. And I I don't want I hate to be a shoulda coulda woulda guy but we hindsighted on this optic you know this optic control but I want to hindsight really quick on these up the, the optic breach match that map one we had an uncharacteristics point six eight from Lin so he started out that series really slow if he's shooting differently that map one. The game's different. Okay, go map four now. You don't you don't want to give him that pass. That's fine. Map four, sub base. You saw two different times on the map. If you were watching even uh, Nameless on the CDL broadcast brought it up. He showed how the spawns were messed up and how sub base pretty much screwed Rocker out of winning that map very clearly. So you have two two maps there where it becomes now instead of Rocker down 0-3 on map, you know, uh, match count, they're 1-2. Optic series, if they don't troll a control, it's they're 2-1, and one, right? So to... A lot of people like to look at this too objectively and not actually taking the facts and the Call of Duty being played. But Rocker as a team are playing well, but just not closing out and having these troll sessions late in series or or not closing out certain hardpoint maps uh, because of a stinker or a weird spawn. That's going to be something that I think needs to be watched over the next few weeks. But if it gets too detrimental in the next couple weeks, then at that point, you just have to address the the glaring issue, which is, Three players that are playing fairly consistently and are having and are standing out a lot of the time, um, but then you know trying to get Wake to be consistent enough, especially in hard point where you know you get two hard point. You only have one controller series. You got two hard points. You'd rather have a player that can give you more in those hard points than just in that control. I mean, you know, I was just gonna say like you hard points the only issue for Wake. Yeah, really. Like is S, you know, we look at S and D or whatever like that, you know. That's you know we can skip past it. I mean he's shooting in control, but they're still not even winning the control. <laughs> like yeah, 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 you know like yeah he's shooting, but I expect him to shoot. He's a shooter and knows where everyone's spawned, and that's where he comes in. That's where that's where he's best. I mean, how many times have you seen him every single year frying everyone, including the pros, are calling him a kill whore? Yeah, we'll say that's the, it. it. Oh. <laughs> Hey, I was one of them. He was good at that <laughs> game, though. It, no, he was good at that. He he was no, good at that game. Who this cat was, and then he just comes out of nowhere and has the best of. Which you know, and that happens. But world. right now, right now, you know, speaking of right now, he, like he just he do, he just looks lost on hard point control. I expect him to be good in because he knows where they're spawning, and you know, I, I you know, I'm not going to speak for Lamar, but I know Lamar. He's probably losing absolute fucking fool. Um, deep down, because Lamar knows how to play COD. You know, he he's he's won. He knows how to play COD. Like, look, look, even go back to World War Two of his TK team. You know, Theory was dropping point sixes, point sevens, and they were winning very convincingly. Like he the knows. Theory had a point seven eight. Like they, he knows no, how to win. Point, six, he eight. knows how point, to play. Six, eight. Yeah, I think it's a point like, seven. Either or, right. he got pissed on. Either or, he got pissed on, and Lamar knows how to bring the best out of someone that isn't going to be able to shoot like that against, you know, a shoot like Simp and Abizi and stuff like that. So, obviously different times now, but to say, you know, we, we like you said, Ace, I think we give him one more week of matches, maybe even one more match, and... If they lose I, think thieves, if, I think they play FaZe and then I think they play Thieves or something. Yes. If they thieves. lose the Thieves, like chalk it up. By the yeah, I think the FaZe loss, if it goes to a close series and a FaZe loss, that's going to be a dagger. And then if they if thieves, if it goes to Thieves and they lose that, then it's like the alt, then it's like Tombstone, it's over. You got to talk now. We're fucking garbage at that point. It's like, you, it's like you said, like who's better than Wake right now? But... There's clearly, in my opinion, there's clearly a bunch more people better than Wake and Hardpoint right now. Yeah, that's that might be that might be the factor right there. It's not who's better at Wake overall, but who who's giving more in the strategic breakdown of a series. I need a player more yeah. who can give me two hard points rather than one control, and can give me something in search. Uh, there, there's... Now, it, now listen, if now listen, if Wake was a guaranteed control win, that'd be a different conversation. But the two times he's fried, they've lost, so it's not a guaranteed control win at that point either. So, 
It's mixy. He just looked better in control. It's mixy though. I mean, uh, again, we we sp I think we speak about we spoke about Rocker a lot here. Uh, we could jump to Boston Breach, the team that Rocker lost. There's to. obviously some similarities. Yeah, yeah there's mm. the consistency similarities. Uh, let's look at Boston's two matches from the weekend. Obviously, we've been looking at the one with Rocker, but let's take a look at their 3L loss against New York. Um, not as pretty. I think like we have to cook Ace a little bit, Trey. Yeah. After slamming Snoopy a week, and then his boys get cooked game five and Snoopy drops at 1.2. Like. I had to admit, I did have a little bit of a smile on my face. Not <laughs> of course. Because, you know, I wanted to prey on Ace's downfall, but I just thought that it was quite quite sweet, really, wasn't it? Bruh. I mean, listen, but Sasha we, comes we out could... in the post interview and he... says Snoopy's one of the most talented players he's in the league. So. Yeah, no, but we, we, we can talk about it too. Like, talent doesn't necessarily mean wins, you know? Like, there's been so many talents where, you know, I played with Dylan Codd. He was probably one of the most talented I've ever played with doesn't necessarily mean you get win, just means you can see that potential on him. You just need to bring it out of him and, you know, turn him into that, you know, turn him into that. Um, but we've also got to talk about the three, no loss to Boston, uh, to, to New York. Sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They got violated. Yeah. This was bad. Yeah. They like, like let, let's, 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 you know, let's not breeze past over this. Like, you know, they, they done something, you know, yeah, they they done something to Minnesota. You know, if we're gonna sit here and cook, you know, Minnesota and you know everything like that, we gotta cook everyone, and they got violated. Um, you know, and you know, Priest was in my stream today. You know, vibe and everything like that. I even I told him you got to focus up. Get I, I, I I literally told him I said, listen, you, you you're playing decent, but you got pissed on in that S and D versus New York. I'll say it to people. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I'll say it to people. He nearly dropped a zero and eight. You're pissed on the whole series. He nearly dropped a zero and eight. New York looked good. Let's not take away that from New York, but that's not competing. I'll just say before Ace goes, like, if there's one series where Priester needed to play well, it's when you're playing the team that just bloody dropped you off their world championship team, and you let the guy that they dropped you for, fry your shit while you draw a point six. Yeah. Like, even if New York don't win anything this year, which they may not, but Priest is not showing anyone that, like, they made the wrong decision on present performance. And sure, they went on to beat Rocket, and fair enough. But, like, this is a series, I know that Solik says it in the chat, like, against New York, it's expected, but I don't think it should be expected. Like, if you're a team like Boston that is paying big bucks and you want to try and win championships, this is the type of series you need to be taken down to the wire. And I don't know. I watched the ref the was also the doing the dishes. That I got. Okay, true. The ref was doing the dishes game one. <laughs> <laughs> you got to put the little asterisk by the series for that. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. My feeling is that the Slasher Priest AR duo just is not going to. Um, Slash has been playing better. I just don't see it. In, in the same way that Wake and Lamar. Oh, you know, I, I don't know if I see the Slasher Priest AR duo lasting on this evidence. It's like I said to you, bro, like, it, we got to look at it as, you know, over the years, you know, has the Slasher Priester, has it worked at all, like, crazy, or is it just, you know, one of those things where you see it, it looks good on paper, and it just doesn't work out. I feel like with the roster change I made with Asim, you just got to let it go out, because Asim might be the person that can, you know, help him out. Um, But from from that New York series, it didn't look good. At all. Um, it didn't even look like a fight was being put up. And then that S and D just didn't look. You know, I always gas up the slasher as being the best S and D player we've had in COD competitive. And I still I still believe that, but that S and D didn't look good. Okay. Boston <clears throat> breach, man. Okay. I will take back not fully. But part of my criticism of Snoopy... Actually, you know what? Screw that. I'm not taking back any of my criticism of this kid. My criticism is still valid. He's a gunny on the map. I don't disagree that he can shoot back and hard point and stuff. He's going to get his kills. But are they effective kills? Right? If, if the maps are still going close to the end, to the wire, if you're up, if you're dropping a 1.1, are they effective kills? Or, or, or are you not... You know, do you get what I'm trying to say? His kills are a lot more like scrap kills and and transition kills. But he, a lot of times he's 
where he is on the map, it's not about his kills. It's about where he is on the map and influencing spawns or messing up timings and stuff of that nature, right? That's where experience and, and slasher and priesta, hopefully Asim can get him locked in and appropriate his, his usage on the map. Did he play well against Rocker? Yes. Was that maybe because of me and he heard some shit talk? Possibly. Do I apologize <laughs> to Rocker? Yes. But overall, they're a very inconsistent team. Against NYSL, it looked like we got one version of them. Against Rocker, it looked like a whole other version of the team. Um, Boston needs to find some footing, especially when you have a guy like Asum, who I think in, on this team, I wouldn't even say Priest does the glue. I would say Asum is the glue of this team more or less now. So it's kind of a different dynamic where I do think Preston is the X factor that if Preston plays well, he's the X factor, but Asim is the glue. If Preston plays well, then Breach have a chance in any series. But if he's getting crapped on 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.5, whatever it may be, then Boston Breach literally fall apart and have no chance against any top or bottom or middle pack team. What do you want to say, Trey? Uh, there's not much to say, really. If I'm being honest with you. Um, There's a lot to say on the next team. I just looked at the, I just looked at the chat. I hate all of you, by the way. I hate all of you with the yaps, man. I hate all of no, you. No, but you were yapping, brother. Like, I mean, you're talking... I don't know. It's just... What's you the know, yap? Most glasses people say no. because when they look back on the past... He has these glasses on where every play that Snoopy makes, even if he, like, clutches something, is like, ah, oh, well, actually, that wasn't good because this. And then if he loses one... I remember when they played against, you know, the 1v1 against uh, Skies, he looked the wrong way. Maybe there's some mistake on that part. Maybe you shouldn't have looked away, but it's like a, a part that's called timing. But No, but we all sat know. there and watched that, and he played scared. Yeah, for sure. I agree. Like, I don't disagree now, that there are problems with Snoopy's style at times, but I just disagreed with Ace's perspective, or with Ace's perspective on what to do nah, with Snoopy I as a player. I, like I said, sending people to challenges doesn't necessarily mean they come back better. You got to give them the time. You know that's what that you look at footballers, you look at other people, you look at academy players that come through. They play with the first team, they get better over time. Now clearly they've invested a lot into Snoopy in terms of being that player for the future. You've just got to ride it out, regardless win or lose. And you know they got violated by New York, and I, then they wait, bounced I have a, back. I, I have a question for Rab because Rab's Rab just Rab just pissed me off with what he said. Hey, Rev, <laughs> would you build a team? Would you build a team with Linz as your centerpiece or Snoopy? Answer that. I would choose... Be I honest. I would choose Linz or the evidence of this season. Okay. If you had to build a team with Snoopy or Gwyn, who are you picking? That becomes a little bit more challenging. I mean, think about it, though. Let, let me know. Chat, I think it chat, depends please, the please players answer that you're. I think the players that you're putting around him, I, I think you can go either way, but... I personally think Snoopy is more talented than Gwyn. On what basis? On just raw ability. I'm I'm genuinely a fan. Just gun skill, right? Of putting players. Yeah, just gun skill. Fair and enough. That doesn't, okay. That, that doesn't tell the whole picture. But I'm I value talent quite highly when it comes to building rosters because I like to win. And this is my issue, my right? Issue. Wait, wait, wait. Sorry, sorry. I, I have to oh, cook. No, to this is my, this is my problem. No. This is my problem. You he value goes. Italian, but then you, that's, the type, that's the type of thinking that leads to like uh, certain optic rosters that weren't able to win. You put talent together, it doesn't mean anything. But it, it's intelligence and smarts that make you win. That's why with like, you brought the theory, or uh, we brought the TK theory example. The smarts and intelligence of players can make a 0.7 or 0.68 or 0.78, whatever theories KD was, look great, look mag magnificent. Whereas a Snoopy 1.2 is still leading to a Boston Breach 3-2 win. It's not, doesn't look good. That's my issue. And the fact that you have issues putting together a team with Snoopy as your centerpiece is what my criticism stems from. He's good gun it skill, but he doesn't make intelligent plays on the map that's the problem in essence thank you for putting it forward Mwah. i mean this is moving the all right wait, wait, hang, on, hang, on, hang on hang on hang on Mwah. hang on i'm I'm gonna cook everyone here right now we say this about snoopy but we say this about snoopy Linz, and gwyn let's not make it out like their teams are doing good that's not that wasn't the question the question was who would you yeah team but no, no question but, I, but but that's my point yeah rocker are own four uh, 0 and 3, 0 so and 3, 0 and 3 right now. 0 and all right. 
What are, what are Carolina like? One and a zero and fifty-five, something like that. <laughs> I mean, they're probably one and two or something. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're all getting they're all getting they're all getting the same record. They're all in the same boat. They've all got their own issues. Wait, uh, wait, 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 wait! Stop, stop, stop! Hang on, no, oh, no, wait, no, wait, no, wait, wait, wait! You pissed me off too. How are they in the same boat? You just equated a tenth and eleventh team to the fifth team in fifth place. How are they the same? Because we're sat here making out like they're all fucking winning every game. No, brother. The difference is, is that clearly one of the rookies is putting his team in a position to win. That's the one who's fifth place. Do you see what I'm saying? No, that team just had, that that team just had a better LAN event. Now they're all getting pissed. Yeah, there's, on. More, there's more to it than one player. Like. No, I'm, my my point is not that. My point is again. Look at the look at the games. Look at the matches. Look at the overall picture. Not just this week. You're comparing. You're saying it's the same. Eleventh and tenth place are the same in your mind as the fifth place team that took Toronto to five. Should have won against Optic and should have won against Breach. How are they the same? This is my point. This is why I think even though Snoopy had a good series against Rocker, who Could I'm fighting for, Breach. he's not. He's my criticism still remains until he could prove that wrong and put Boston in a position to beat, or even t or even I'll, I'll I'll move the goalposts back for Rab. If even he can take some of the series against a New York and Optic, a Phase or Toronto, the distance. Then I'll give him his credit for being the difference maker that you need. To, you need to be that kind of smart player to take one of those four teams the distance. And clearly, they played NYSL and got piss slammed when it came down to it. And yes, to the person you know, I just looked at the looked at the chat real quick. To the person that said piss slammed, yes, they got three v fourteen by Optic. Yes, piss slammed. Let's not forget. You know, I don't. I don't care. About, I don't care about that. I don't care about what is it the a, score is. Is it a scam or is it a clutch? I don't know. It's, they a, are, it's a scam it's more a than scam. it is a clutch. It's, it's a scam more it's than it scam. is a clutch. To be We're fair. not going to sit here, all right? End of the day, it's all about overall record. If everyone lost a game 3-2, does that make the team good? No, it means they're ass. If they're 0 and they're 15 and they lose every match 3-2, it still means they're ass. It doesn't matter. I disagree. I would disagree partially. Because map count doesn't I mean, end up mattering too. We all know that. All right, so if I finish a season zero and thirty-two, but I but I went three-two against every single team, does that make me good? It doesn't tell the whole picture. It doesn't make you good. It doesn't make you good, obviously, because you can't finish out. I don't. I don't. Make I don't make champs. I, I don't make champs. There's a, but, but bro, the, the way you just phrase that though is, is crazy because it's objective. If I don't win, hey, 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 so if I don't win. Hey, Ace, if I don't win a if I don't win a match in a whole league for a whole year, are you gonna say that I'm good? No, but if you took the top four teams to map fives every single time, then an argument, at least you, you have the argument could be made. You see what I'm saying? Right. If, let me ask you a question. If Minnesota lose every single match, this split in the, on, in the online split, are they gonna, would you make a change? Or would you just say, ah, they've just been, they've had an unlucky split? Are you saying that every match goes, like every map goes to five? Everyone, they go to five every time? Yeah. Uh, then again, then an argument exists to not make it. You should make a change. Yes. In the end, but an argument exists that we're just right before the finish line. So it's kind of like we're right before where we need to be versus if you're getting three Oh slammed, then a different conversation has to be had to say that they're the same is objectively just wrong though. I, I, I don't know where we're going with this. It's objectively wrong to say that if you take every team to five, that you're, you're worse or the same as a team that's getting three Oh slammed. I don't know. That's that's it's like it's like thieves in the first stage. I was talking about this on one of our early one or first or second dope check episodes. But thieves had the worst map count, but a better record than a few of the bottom teams. But you could tell they were worse because they had the worst map count. So, re, you know, fast forward. My point now, is, it's, it's all about uh, my point. My my point is, it's all about overall record. If a t if if Minnesota finished zero and five and. Another team below them finish zero and five. They're but no matter who, how they lose or anything like that, you're still going to make a change. That's fair. I mean, if you if you lose to, we don't have to look that far. If they lose to thieves, then the conversation absolutely yeah, yeah, no, no, needs no, no. to I'm, be brought up without I'm, question. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, like you know, you could go zero and five both times, no matter who you play, and you're probably still going to look at making a change because you haven't won. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter yeah. how you lose. Yeah, that's my point. It don't matter how you lose. Yeah, you've been fucking. You know, it looks bad, but like. You know, a zero and five is still a zero and five. Spe speaking That's the way. Uh, I was like, speaking of thieves, though, thieves were thieves had a really interesting weekend, in my opinion. They looked. Uh, let's jump to them because I, I was, I yeah. was very. I mean, they played one game, but they did. But mm -hmm. it, it was, it was oddly impressive. It was oddly impressive. I, I'm not gonna say impressive is the wrong word.
it was oddly satisfying to see them playing well, to see Nasty playing well. To see My boy Afro Afro's yeah, back. Yeah, Afro shooting I back know, a little that's bit. That's what I'm trying He's to say, back. baby. Yeah, it was good to see. So, I mean... No, listen, we... we... You know, he, I've got I I got a lot of things to it, say. To I got a lot of things. I got a lot of things to say about you know thieves and Miami. Um, but I, I'm going to start off with thieves. I feel like we should go to them, give them some credit. Shaky for sure. <laughs> oh my god, was it shaky? Shaky for sure. That's... And then you know, and an unreal comeback map one, if I'm not mistaken. Um, they broke their hard point drought. They won one. They won one. That's, that's... My boy Afro is finally shooting. I done a tweet as well saying it's nice to see all the boys smiling again. Mm. Um, you know, but prior to them like you know losing the map and them just sat there like this, like not knowing what's going on. Nature's probably watching it too. Like fucking hell, what have we got here? Um, and you can clearly tell, and I will always say this: that if you are having fun, you will play better. And Afro smiling, he's gunning. He was gunning too. It wasn't like he was like you know one off kills. It, that control, I, they shouldn't have lost. They lost the defense on control. They should have won three 0 that series, in my opinion. Shoulda, woulda, coulda, whatever like that. But they had a defense on high rise control. That's an automatic win, in my opinion. You shouldn't lose those. Right, I but, don't know if the numbers back that up, but I'll let you cook. No, no, I'm saying a high rise control defense. You should win. Yeah. You really should. I don't know if I agree, but go on. Because, I mean, you can go look at the numbers. Majority de majority defense on that wins that map. You can go run up some numbers if you want, though. Yeah, I just like when good teams play that map, it seems like they can, you know, phase play offense on yeah. the map. They just shut up. No, for sure. And I said it to Ace. I said it to Ace, yeah, because Ace said he's, he thinks that map is the fairest control map, which I agree. You can win an offense, you can win a defense. It has the same spawns on either side. I just think a defense, you know, should win anyway. Scratch that. Afro is fucking shooting. Nasty shooting. Ghosty, you know Ghosty we can talk awesome about. Series. Like he was we can talk so about is you know I, I I was sat there in our Discord you know screaming because five free curse. I thought they were gonna choke it. Goes five five. My father Daniel Ghosty crouching behind two fucking seats in plane and pops a two piece. Oh, I've I've never been so happy, and that's not because I hate Miami. <laughs> it <is. laughs> it, it, it's not it's not but nearly 20k damage two piece five five he's had a good series they've all had a good series they've played well as a team they look like they're smiling hopefully they can continue taking this um into the next set of matches and hopefully it's not a one-off um i mean what do we think about kremp right like is he because in the series he's played so far he's been kind of underwhelming like, there's only so many kills to go around because, like, I think Nasty's good. I think Afro is still going to be inconsistent. That's how he plays. But when he's on, he's on. It's just like so far, Kremp has been, he hasn't really done shit. Like, you know, no, there's been no, no play that I've been like, damn, this guy is like. And he was good before in Boston, but I, I just don't know, right? Like, if Nasty helps the team and he helps Afro, they're not getting rid of Ghosty. It's like, that's the role where if the team continues. If they struggle to make real strides from here, then, you know, that's the player that I would be thinking about right now. Because Joe Deceives is still on the bench. But. You know, on this team, uh, with this structure and with how much he's had to overcome, an argument should 100% be made that Ghosty is one of, the, one of the best players in the game. Because with every player on his team basically in the last several weeks playing pretty terribly. He's been a, a, stand, a standout player every single week, basically. You know, almost 20K damage in this series against Heretics. Without him, they don't win the series. Um, I don't think any map they've played this season without him is even close. If, they, if he wasn't that team and you place him with any other potential AR that could have been in that slot, they're not winning. Ghosty's a, a real candidate for like an all-star of the season and one of the best players he doesn't get enough credit. I think he's the most underrated right now. Um, and it's criminal that his talent is being wasted on this team that's playing so poorly this season. Uh, you hate to see it. It, it. It's like seeing, I don't know. It's like seeing um, 
Joe, uh, NBA example. So, you know, close your ears, your Euros, you have no idea what I'm talking about. But it's like seeing a Joel Embiid on the Sixers, one of the best players in the world, but knowing it's never going to go anywhere. Ghosty's one of those guys. You got to get him some help, build, build the franchise around him, and LAT can really make some noise, I think, if they do get rid of... It has to be Kremp or Afro. Afro did have a good series here, so I'm, I'm not trying to shit on him right now. But you got to get him the right structure and build around Ghosty because with his comms, his skill, Thieves should be playing better, theoretically. Thieves should move up in the standings, theoretically. They just need to find the right roster around Ghosty. And I think J-Cap and Shane are the right guys when it comes to subbing in players and finding the roster that's going to make an impact in the league. I'm okay right now with letting them carry on. A little bit longer? A bit more time. Now, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm not going to sit here and discredit the fact that they are, you know, bottom of the fucking pack again. I, I, I think they're still bottom of the standings, right? Yeah. By five points. Let's not go away from that. But I think this is the first series that you've seen them play where they actually look like they're working together and have good teamwork. Now, be it not against the greatest of teams right now, we won't, uh, we'll get into them later, or I'll get into them later, because you guys think I've got some kind of fucking hatred for them. <laughs> um, but I, I do agree with you, Ace. I think, you know, even you look at Ghosty on the Optic team, you know, there was a lot of credit from the players and stuff like that. Yes, he got dropped. Um, but it's not like he got dropped for someone that you think was less of him or anything like that. He got dropped for Pred. You know, that's uh, uh, Pred, and, Pred and Kenny. You know, look at it like that. Don't look at it as if he's been, you know, thrown out because he was shit. There was just better players on the market at that time yeah. that you would consider better than him. Um, I think you got to give a lot of credit to him too for having, you know, for being and being as consistent as he has been in that team. Um, especially right now, I'm I'm happy to give him this major, I guess, just to see how they fare up. You know, you got to give him a chance. New players coming in. Kremp, obviously, you know, like you guys said, hasn't had, you know, Kremp level performances like he did on FaZe Black or in Boston. But clearly, whatever they've got right now has helped out in terms of Afro shooting better or like people being more happy on the map. Maybe their scrims are going well and it's going to translate or something like that. I think you've just got to give them a little bit more time. I'd say give them this major. And if the major doesn't go to plan, you got to start looking at something else and I don't I don't know who you would drop. You would just have to see um, who plays the worst, I guess, on the team to see where the changes happen. Um, but I'm happy with what I saw and, you know, call it bias because of Nasty and Afro or whatever like that. But I'm very happy to let them can carry on for the next, until, until the major to see what they can do. If the major's ass, get rid of, you know, blow it up, do what you need to do. It's... Uh, I, I think a little, I think we're giving too much, a little too much credit to the, to Afro or Kremp or Afro in this case, because they did play heretics who are on a zero, a zero and four slump right now. Pretty, pretty the worst team in the league by far in this, at least this stage. Um, if Kremp still plays badly, I think we do, sh we should see him or Afro swapped out for Joe Deceives because again, you just having that Joe Deceives run in gun in their previous system. Right when you had Cami and stuff there, it wouldn't work. But I think with a nasty, a ghosty, and a Kremp, if you put Joe in that structure where he can go a little bit more free and have Kremp as your glue, nasty shooting, ghosty calling out, you'd have a a, a good team structure that would lead to Joe Deceive's play style being successful. Um, as of right now, again, I'm not convinced about Kremp or Afro just yet. I am convinced about Nasty and Ghosty for sure. Ghosty, absolutely. Again, I think if any player had the biggest downfall from last year to this year the most roadblocks stacked against them coming into this year, it's got to be Ghosty. Optic to LAT during a restructuring phase. I, w I feel terrible for Ghosty. And I think it might be short term pain for long term gain with Ghosty. I, think. I agree there, but at the same time, I feel bad that his prime years of COD, when he proved himself last year, is wasted. Is wasted. I will say this. There's though. reasons for that. Like, no, no, I, 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 I will say, I will say no, this. Top, number right. top three to, to bottom 12 is criminal. I will say this though, all right. We say like you know, we say biggest downfall or, or something like that, or roadblock, whatever like that. He went from playing challengers to optic to LA thieves. Yeah, but you're equating LA thieves to what LA thieves meant a couple years ago. 
Rose but LA th- to just play ever to get picked up by Optic. Like, yeah, that's what. No, my point is. My point is, it's not like he went from Optic to Paris or you know anything this like is, that. This he's is, got, I mean, to be fair, this is essentially Paris right now. No, no, but he ha- no, but at least he's got. We know he's got the backing. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. You, like, like it's it. We know he's got the back. Like, if Nade wants to pick up some players. He can pick up some players. It's not like the situation you know, can they, change. They, That's basically yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like you know, obviously they don't have the money like they did. What well, they do, but like they don't want to spend it because they don't see like the point in it. Like the, yes. the budget isn't there. Yes. But it's not like you've thrown him to Paris and it's like, oh, Ghosty, who do you want to team with? These are the bottom top sixty-four challenger players. <laughs> Take your pick. It, he he's got like, and I'm not I'm not giving credit, Ace. I know it sounds like I was giving like a lot of credit. I'm just giving credit right now where it's due in terms of just the recent match they played. I think we can all agree that, you know, we looked at Afro beforehand. We were like, you know, he, you know, needs to pick it up now or it's, it's over. Joe deceives on the bench. I think he's been frying in challenges, if I'm not mistaken. I think he's been playing very well. I think right now it's between Afro and Kremp, whoever, you know, gets traded out for, for Joe deceives. I think if you just look at it like this, you'd probably say Afro. If if they continue playing bad, just because they've just picked up Kremp, so they probably have more faith in it at that point. Um, but that's why I say give them time. I'm 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 not taking away the fact that they're they're still you know two and fourteen or two and fifth two and thirteen in hard point or anything like that. But give them time. Give Ghosty the credit he deserves. Nasty the credit he deserves, and you know. Congratulations on the win! It was a big win. They needed it to start. Uh, I could not imagine the vibes in that camp if they got reverse swept. Honestly, <laughs> I thought it was really so Yeah, short. I thought the bomb uh, was it, happening, bro. I really did. After ma- after map four, I said, "Holy shit, Miami's about to." They they went in the back room, bombed it up, and came back in, and we're gonna slam. I mean, let's do Miami, right? Because yeah. Wait, uh, before they, before we start with Miami, I just want to say I did scroll through Discord at some point. Um, I think it was yesterday, and I did see Ghosty and Nasty in a channel watching some vod together i'm pretty sure wow so, that's some good info listen, right there that's an exclusive LAT info right there. Now, 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 I don't, now, now i don't know now i don't know if they're watching vod they could have been watching a movie but my point is it's nice to see two players that never really con you know spoke or anything like that s- chilling or watching vod together or something like that because they clearly believe that you know it's it's some good stuff working over there a win leads to friendship who would have knew a, a, a win leads to some good vibes who would have thunk you know? They definitely could have been doing something. They, someone said they could have been having E set. No, no. I think they would be going over one, buddy. I think. So, I, 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 if, but honestly, that might be good for the chemistry, if, to be honest. What are some E sets? <laughs> Bro, what, like, no, no stop it. Immediately. No, no, no. Pull it back. Rain, pull the reins back. Pull the reins back. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Listen, listen, listen. Speaking of if, if vibes, if you need wins to get vibes, then it must be absolutely slaughterhouse chalked inside of the Miami Heretics camp. Someone on this Have panel. Have you seen their player cams? This someone in, on this panel has been talking specifically about how the Miami Heretics play style is not gonna pan out and is not gonna work out as the year progresses. Uh, Trey, what the hell happened? What did you see this week from Miami? Is this thing on? <laughs> because am I wrong? Am I wrong? Now, oh, everyone, everyone, everyone thinks I've got some sort of agenda. There's no agenda here. I don't hate anyone. There's no agenda. Bruh. It's literally there in front of us. Spanish cod does not prevail again. <laughs> you can't tell me going 0-2 down to thieves. Vegas Who and thieves have lost you this week. Vegas and thieves have lost you this week. Who would have thought? <laughs> now, I don't know what's going on in that camp. I really don't. But they don't look like they want to be there. Go watch their player cams. Win or loss, win around. Win around. I've never seen someone win around. We talk about Clay looking down when he wins around. Look at Vickle's face cam. They went around it. Fist bumps there. No smiles, no nothing. Some I don't know what's going on over there. This ain't looking good. Maybe maybe I've got into some heads. Um, 
you know, I, I had a funny tweet, but I wasn't going to tweet it because everyone thinks I've got an agenda. There's no agenda. Proof's right there. You see it. It happens. Now, are we get, you know, who's getting dropped next? Someone, someone's getting dropped. 100%. Because Royale, I mean, I don't think this was confirmed when we did the video with like last week's episode because they put Royale in. I mean, we, I guess we talked about it on the on the pre-show probably, but I mean, they bring Royale in visa? on the bench. No, he's probably not ready to play, but I mean, as soon as you see them sign a second substitute, you know it's chopped, like internally. You know, oh, 100%. Bro, uh, uh, my, my point is, you know, they're obviously going full Spanish route. You know how I feel about that. He can't keep the smirk off his face, this guy. You know, <laughs> you know how I feel. You know, you know how I feel about that. Um, it, 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 in my opinion, it just don't work. And it just don't. I got a, a, I mean, a source, a source told me that the Real visa was simply bottled by the Ravens. So surprise, surprise. Um, they said yeah, by that you so like yeah, by, can, can uh, heretic uh, solve it like uh, so yeah, then, then the follow up to that was the source said that the Ravens had bottled his visa but it wasn't chalked as in he doesn't have to wait a year before he reapplies so Miami should be able and I believe are gonna get Real over to the states and with the visa um, again we we spoken at Trey has. Ex extensively spoken on how the Ravens as an org have done people he know or himself wrong. And from the source, what they're basically what they're translating to me and telling me is that real situation was a, was a mess up by the org again. And it wasn't actually due to like real's not chalked up in his visa. He didn't get rejected. It was a, a, a scam basically from the org and Miami should have no trouble getting real over here to the States. That's well, crazy Trey. Can you believe that? For him. So. Uh, oh honestly, gosh. honestly, Wait, and you, you, you want me you, you want you want me to be real with you as well. I'm gonna assume that this was a Ravens like little bit of a plan from the Ravens in terms of if they couldn't get it done, that they weren't gonna try and carry on getting it done. Um, I think they were like play with this guy, see how it goes. Obviously, Tej hops in. They probably hit up Clay and were like or Saint like how's the scrims going? Like yeah, really, really good. All right, fuck that. Then we'll cancel that visa. We'll get him <laughs> <laughs> cancel, cancel that. We'll save, we'll save a couple grand on that, and uh, we'll just pick up Teach. Um, yeah, it, it comes that, back down to that money issue, man. It's, it, we, I spoke on it the week, uh, like week, week two or something. Week three is before Trey. You were on the show, but we, I spoke on the fact that I speculated on the idea that Real's visa was an org mess up rather than uh, something that. He just couldn't get in the States somehow, even though he's playing for a officially sanctioned league with Activision backing. You know, his paperwork is going to look good. Why would any reasonable place like, you know, Spain or anywhere in Europe deny you from coming to play in a professional league backed with millions of dollars? It makes it, the, the story just didn't make sense, right? And um, so that's one thing, to a one money thing, issue and in, in, in a scam from the org. That's why it just had to come one, out. One thing I was going to say is the Ravens are very prone to blaming other people too when they know it's their fault. Mm. In my opinion, you know, Real can, you know, say, say what he wants on this. I guarantee London hit him up and were like, the lawyer's fucked up. Something like that. We can't get you out here. Deep down, London just thought, you know what, it's cheaper. T just playing well. We won't try and get him out here because if we keep him here, we're going to have to keep paying him as a sub. And we don't want to do that. They've probably got Brian Saint on the bench because, you know, it's, you know when, they, when they release someone or like they drop someone, they just get rid of them. They don't hold them. They're not doing what LA Thieves is doing where they're keeping Joe on the bench. They just get rid of him. If they truly wanted him on the team, they would have held him. They would have got his visa sorted out. They would have held him on the bench until he got here, and he would have been here. We all know what's going on over there. We we, we don't have to, you know. I've I've roasted them I'm enough. What I'm saying about serious organizations like Vegas don't even try and get European players because they say they don't say, but they make it clear enough. We ain't paying shit for visas, so we're just gonna sign the cheapest guys we can. Ravens pretend they're like, oh yeah, no, we're, we're a serious team. We're gonna get this guy from Europe going to put this team together we're going to sign in you know big clay and then you know they mess about but to be fair to them they did win a series this weekend i mean i don't really want to talk about ravens so i want to talk about surge but i guess we can finish in miami quickly like where do we go 
from here with this team. It might be chalked. Like, this is the thing. If you're Vegas, you're loving life. You've got Miami. You've got Surge. You've got Boston. You know, Thieves still. Ravens. Looking a bit suspect. I mean, yeah. Miami. Oh, let's look at Miami's upcoming. Miami's upcoming is New York next, which is pretty much assume that they're going to go down 0-5. Like, this, their, their record's going to get worse. And then you have Carolina and Minnesota to close out. So, in likelihood, if you just play purely on current gameplay, at least, there's a high chance Miami ends this split one and six, or zero and I seven. I thought you were gonna say zero and seven. No, no, I was gonna say. I was gonna give. I was gonna say zero and seven. I was gonna give them Carolina. Just, you know, I'm saying like almost best case scenario is one and six. If you're Miami, um, I spoke on this earlier. You need to bring in Real. Uh, I tweeted about this when they announced the Real sub that they need to bring in Real as soon as possible. And the, I didn't put this on the tweet, but I want to say it here. Clayster doesn't identify bad rookie talent. He is known for picking good rookie talent. If Clay saw something in Real, you have to assume the kid is good and can shoot back, right? That's why to me, some people were like, oh, big, but Eric Boom played well or Journey this or I don't give a shit what you're saying. Real got scouted by Clay. Get him on the team. Vamos, vamos in the facility, brother. Get in. You said these sticks are not playing. What? Once he's ready to go, I'm bringing in Journey too. I agree. I agree as well. I, Journey's take like, it. I'm. I'm two on. man change. Journey. Journey played very well in their online qualifiers. Yes. You give him what you gave him one bad event with Spanish COD, and you just chalk him up. No, Journey's been it someone. It seems like that, there's drama there. I don't know if there is drama, but like there, there, there's got to be. Watch that but... Heretics documentary and shit, and they said the coaching staff was shitting on them. Like I don't know, but I'm... Eric has been getting slammed like big time. Listen, we got we like you know, my agenda's my agenda is always backed with some pretty hard hitting facts. I don't have an agenda on no one for no reason. Journey was, I think, probably their best player in the online calls in the first in the first set, just from what he does on the map. Um, he has one bad LAN event. I'm going to assume there's some internal beef. I, I, what's what's with all this internal beef recently, too? Why can't players just play? You know, like, I, I, I take it back to me and Rated. We fucking hated each other. <laughs> but as soon as we sat down on main stage and put our headsets on, it was business. Uh, no matter what. <laughs> I respected I respected Rated as I knew he was good. Rated respected me as I knew he was good. Out of the game, yeah, if I can hate more you want. As soon as you put that headset on, we are teammates. We are friends. We get the job done, and then we can fuck off again. Too many good players and too many good teams are being ruined by these this this internal beef that's happening, and it sucks. Grow up. Grow up here. No one, not everyone likes each other. You're professional players. This ain't Love Island. Get a grip. They, Miami, again, we've talked on this before, but they, Miami have put themselves in a, in a bad corner. They don't even have a 2-2 split in terms of their no NA players in the team, so they're forcing the hand at Spanish COD. Whether Spanish COD is, is consistent or not, that's a debate for a different day and a debate we've had already. But it's more the fact that Miami at some point needs to accept that they need to get some new talent and the situation they're in is going to essentially force their hand to have to restructure at some point and send some Spanish players back home. You spent a lot of money bringing these guys. Oh, sorry. I was going to say, you spent a lot of money bringing these guys to the States, visas and everything else, and also just incorporating them, obviously, with a facility in, 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 my, in uh, Florida, everything else. But at some point, you're going to have to accept the fact that building a, a sole European team with no English involved is going to blow up in your face. And the fact that no one saw this early on and no one saw it as a problem coming in seems like we, they were overly optimistic and overly idealistic rather than looking at the straight reality that Spanish COD has never done anything in pro COD. I think we had the discussion about this, didn't we, Rab, where what's the best thing they done was qualify for the pro league where they ripped methods off a heady. I think that's like the most iconic thing Spanish COD has done. Um... I mean, it's probably true. Bro, I, 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 I think that's the only thing that we can really, you know, it's not like they've won events or anything like that. Um, I think that's the most iconic thing they've done. They've beat teams, like for sure. But I think like the most like you know, they've done is that. Um, I think we've also, if they, if they do that, 
ace if they you know if they do you know ever go down the two split or you know bring in an american i feel like we've got to change the coach too bro well exactly i think yeah i don't think they will though i like I think there is enough talent among Spanish players to make it work. It's just, as Trey says, the bloody internal bullshit. Like, it seems the same reason why they struggle to bring in the other Spanish players. Like, I think, I don't know, Real seems like a pretty level-headed guy, so I don't think they're going to clash with him so much. But the other good Spanish players they could get, I mean, I mentioned the names last week, like Rencor and Sucre <laughs> and Super and these guys, whatever you want to say. Ace is going to be like, Rencor? What the fuck is this? No, no, no. But, no. you know, whatever you say on these guys. I, I'd have to, yeah, like, I'd have to correct that. The only thing I have to say about that is, I just saying... There's more options out there, yeah, but exactly. they don't want to do it. I mean, uh, yeah. They're not yeah. boys or whatever. But we look at, like, the coach, you know, I'm not saying you have to be a good player to be a good coach, but Methods weren't a good player. You, I mean, by, 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 <laughs> by, by, by all means, try and cook me. Bruh. But, Excuse I mean, me? But by, 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 all, by, by all means, like, no, I'm being dead serious. Like, I'm not here to be friends with anyone. I'm here to be dead serious. Like, the Spanish the Spanish players didn't beat European players, like UK players. You know that, Rab? We used to laugh at Spanish players. Oh, I remember. I remember the day. We used, to, we used to laugh playing these teams. You know, it's not saying they're not good players, but I feel like they... If they were, if they're together as a team, they're not good. I feel like if you put them in different situations, like Journey, for example, you put Journey on that Phase Academy team on the uh, was it MW 2019? All the players that played with him will tell you he's gross. Tom Gravity, all that shit. Well, they're good players, but together they don't work. I say you put Real, you put Real with Clay, like you said, Ace. It's Clay scouted talent, whatever, like that. Real was looking good with them. I, I, it's not. It's not. It's a known fact that if you play with American players, you get better. Why? Americans just know what they're doing in the game. You know, like we were good back in the day, but you know, look at look at Insight for example. He plays with Scrappy. He plays with Envoy. Guy looks like it. Guy looks final form. I think uh, this team. If you were to take this four, put them under J Cap and, and Shane, this team would be very good. So you definitely need to get in some implementations of NA COD or structure or organization, whatever you want to call it, simplicity. In simple, it's you need to get some strategy on the damn map instead of just trying to run and gun and, and, and play the game that way. Vickle and Journey, I believe, speak decent English, right? Because they, you know, Journey, Journey's team with Americans, Vickle's team with Americans. These two speak decent English. I'm not sure, again, I could be mistaken about Meadows, Lucky, and Eric Boom. I just don't know enough about these guys to speak on that fact. Um... But you do, I think mixing, you, you take Journey, you take Vickles, put them on a team with two NA players. Whether, you know, you, it might be rough in the beginning. You might be looking at like a, you know, who knows, a Donnie and an Exceed or a Brack or, you know, maybe it might look weird in the beginning. But I think the sooner that Miami blow it up and decide to actually take their slot in the CDL serious and play with the best players instead of the true friendship organization, that will be when Miami can be taken seriously. I mean, look at Vickle when he played last year on MW2. I mean, he, 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 he I, no, he was good for Miami. I'm not saying, I'm not saying he was unreal, but he was good. He was good for Florida. Yeah, he was. You know, and, and they were winning matches. They brought it back to the Spanish only friendship type of league. Or, you know, the, again, everyone likes to talk about the rest of the league as being friendship league, but the glaring example of the biggest friendship team league, whatever you want to say, is, the, is Miami. There's no one else who comes close, to be honest. Method, like you said, the, the coach himself wasn't a super successful player in the COD scene. He was good. Like, he was good enough to make it. To, I think they made it to uh, uh, into pool play before, right? Into, into the league spot and pool play. They've done that before. But he wasn't an exceedingly good player. And the rest of these guys don't really have that many accolades where, you know, they deserve it to jump into a CDL spot. If you're Miami, you need to accept the fact that this team is just not going to cut it. And over the year, is just going to get worse and worse for you. And all this money you're putting into it is going to blow up in your face. It's, it's time to make some, you know, cut your losses, build a better team. And if not now, at least maybe after Major 2, when you really see how bad it's going to be and you dip into the standings, do it before it's too late and Champs is out of reach. I think they're going to be sticking with it. Oh, 100%. They're called, Miami, Her they're, 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 work, they're, they're, called, they're, called, they're called Miami Heretics. Heretics are a Spanish org. The strategy is going to be maintained. Now, 
you've got to look at it a different way then if that's the way they want to go. Bring in Real, bring in Journey, I'd say swap out the coach too. Bring someone in that's going to give you a bit more tactical insight. Maybe English, American, whatever like that. Possibly possibly from the UK, possibly a, a 2,000 subs on Twitch, possibly blonde haired currently, <laughs> possibly looks like MGK right now. Pretty yadded, pretty fucking yadded up, dude. I think I think he streams with it with a trophy in his background too, right? That guy. It's a lollipop holder now, but yeah, MVP oh, that, trophy for I, sure. MV, I think an MVP type coach would be a good a good coach for this team. I don't know, hypothetically, of course. Now, now listen, you know, if they they're going to go down the Spanish route, pick up a different Spanish coach, whatever like that. Not roast some efforts at all. Um, I just feel like. <laughs> we we talk we had that coaching episode and we had the players episode we talk about the players you know nothing's working bring in bring in two new players do a two man swap change the coach hit a, hit a little bit of a reset in terms of like that for example and just see where you end up it can't get any worse you know you've just lost you've just, uh, it's true though they've just lost to you know how we deem them the worst team in the league uh, you I know, think there's a worse team Oh shit! Yeah, I mean, basing Who, it off just yeah. Who's worse? Talk to me, Rav. Let's go. You want to cook? Do we want to do worse? them now. Yeah. Who's yeah. Worse? No. You, yeah. You go first on this one, though. This is. Bloody I wouldn't even say. Hell, it. Man. You're like this me. Was a this fun is watch a, this weekend. Go ahead. Tell me. This, who. You. You. You're like me, though, uh, Rab. This isn't an agenda. The proof is there. So, do your this thing, my friend. Put in like okay. We're talking about the Seattle. Oh, what a team. Lord. What an organization. They come in this week against Ravens. And what I will say about the series is that the numbers in the respawns this series, if we look at the series results and see how they lost in the respawn modes, these flatter them big time. Like 150 points, 130, 140 points, that flatters them with how they played these half points. Like it was that bad. They deserve to lose by more on the skid row. They deserve to lose by more on the Rio. They nearly got 60 point clubs on the Rio. Arsatis has his best series in like two years and they still get slammed 3-1. I, I simply don't understand what the hell is going on that they played high-rise control and did the same bullshit they did against New York and got slammed. Like, Ravens, we roasted these guys for being dog shit at control. They're still dog shit at control. Watching them try and close out that round against Surge was painful. But they still did it because they had like a 15 life lead because Surge had dog shit. Like, it was unbelievable what I was watching on the map. Like, I can't believe they got slammed like that on the control. That was criminal. To get slammed on high rise control by Raven, actually, like, the worst thing I've ever seen, I think, this year. Especially when you've just won game two in a pretty comfortable fashion. I'll see well. Surely there's some vibes and some momentum there. But, man, there's so many things to criticize that I don't even know where to. I'm Brezzi's surprised been that pretty useless. I was, I was gonna say I'm surprised that control didn't finish as a draw, but how too how fucking terrible those two teams are at control. <laughs> it was symbolic, man. I, if I if I'm them, I'm coming up to an agreement. Yeah, that no one wins the game. We come, we we play a draw, and we'll we, you know we'll we'll play a hard point instead. Because fuck me, they might be two of the worst control teams I've ever seen in my life. Might. I mean, we've got to talk about Hook as well, like. And also, this is the annoying thing: the way their team is set up. A boozer has to run a sub on Rio and gets piss slammed. Because he ain't running his preferred role, and they're playing the map that doesn't suit them. I mean... And, man, Hook is such an annoying player to watch as well. Like, this guy, he just runs into pre and dies. Like, I just don't see how the hell he fixes his team. Like, they made their bed at the start of the season when they built this bloody roster. Now they've got a lie in it. I know that Illy is... What do you mean? They bought him Brizzy. The guy is going to change it all. <sighs> yeah. I wish it was that simple. Yeah, they bought Brizzy, and he's, ch he's changing it all, right? That's that, that was the plan. Boy, oh boy! One second, let me get my roasters on. Give me a second. I gotta. I, let me get my roasters on. That was the, that was the plan. Boy, what I say about Hook? What I say about him a couple weeks ago? The kid's dookie. He plays like Ace looks like now. Straight Stevie Wonder. The, on the dude map. is <laughs> dookie at this game. It's not created for a player like Hook, especially how he's been playing the last couple years. The flanks and the runs and the weird routes and the timings is not gonna work in this game, bud. You're going to get spat on, shit on. Your teammates also are not giving you what Optic was giving you last year, where, okay, maybe some lanes are open and you can free roam and do some craziness on the map. There's no room for that when you're getting, we got a Booza, Alec, and Brezzy shooting for you. Hook, man. This guy is either lost on the map 
or is taking the 1% play every time he spawns up. He's thinking, I'm going to hit the pinch or I'm going to do a, try to 360 slide, cancel, fake snake somebody. Also, this guy Brezzy's a blatant, I red flagged it. Scump Watch Party red flagged it. This guy's stair glitching. How many times can this team fucking do the same thing again and again? You uh, have a magnifying listen, glass on you, and you're still doing it. It's a player to break a GM. Nah, nah, listen, right. listen, I'm being real. They are fucking dog shit. I'm doing the exact same thing. You're legally blocked, <laughs> bro. <laughs> I'm doing the same. They're, they're, they're fucking, listen, that... I didn't think a team could be the, like, you know, we looked at Thieves and we're like, they can't win a hard point. This team can't fucking. This team can't I, win, I, dude, this team can't win a thing. They, they're S&D, they're getting just blessed in it because of the cheese terminal. Bro, on respawns, <laughs> yeah. they look no, disgusting. No, it is right. They look if you horrible. Gave, if, if they didn't play terminal that series, I think they get 3 node. Bro, if they play, yeah, they play, they play any other search, they're getting waxed, slammed, choke slammed, and again, Al, it's it's not even that they played well in that map. Alec just had the map of his career at fourteen and three. It wasn't like oh, all of, of they're playing such mag magnificent teamwork, and who can Brezzy were coming together and becoming the greatest legion of teams. It's Alec dropping fourteen and three. The only reason why you you won a six three search on terminal. Shout Blow out, Alec. Bro, that's a positive. That's a, that's a positive. Alec had a good series. We'll give it to Alec. Bro, Congratulations. But but it, he's okay. been better. No, no, he's no, been no. better. No, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. I don't. I don't even want to. I don't even want to give him this credit. I don't even want to give him give him his credit no, or the it, credit. Wait, wait, wait. No, we we got to. We got. No, no, we got. You know, he had a one point. No, 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 it's still shit for sure. No, no, no. But we got to give him some credit. Here's why though. Sixty-eight and sixty is the story of the overall. We did this. We did this with Wake, right? We gave, we took away his credit the same way. I have to do this with Alec too, because if you take away this 14 and three, he ends up with a 54 and 57, 0 0.9, 0 0.96, 0 0.97. He played the best, but did he even really play that well? No, the answer is absolutely not. I don't not. think I, 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 I don't think I could play that well in that Bro, team. They let Fellow drop a 1.25 against them online, like. I don't feel like obviously it's like you know it's I agree with what you're saying in terms of taking away like their best their thing you know you look at we okay. we done the same with we we done the same with Wake that's why we have to be fair yeah too. that's why we have to be fair yeah we, that's that's perfectly fine I think the reason I'd say I'm giving our cities his credit is because his team are by far the worst team I've ever seen in my life oh my god right now that's a, that's, like, a, that's a that's a dagger bro. Warfare. Yeah, that's nah, they ain't that, that, it, it, that, like obviously I'm being subjective. Uh, I'm I'm being a bit OTT. They're not the worst team I've ever seen in my life. They're, damn they're the worst though. team in the they're, they're the worst team in the league by far. And it goes back to that statement. Why the fuck did they bring Brezzy in? I mean, where they get rid of him? You're asking us like we know. We, oh, we're yeah. shocked. We're as shocked as you are, brother. And that's that's my point. Everyone's like, "Oh my God, Brezzy's not bad. Why are he roasting Brezzy? Not roasting Brezzy. Let's get out there. We've had this conversation three episodes in a row. Everyone thinks we're roasting Brezzy. Yeah, Brezzy's good, just not for this team. Yeah. Brezzy wasn't changing it. Bre Brezzy was stair glitching. Still didn't change the fucking team. <laughs> Actually, he didn't. He didn't. He, he, did, he didn't even get. He didn't. He, he just. It, it, it don't make no sense. No, no. You, you, you know, gotta get. You, know, you gotta you, get rid of Huke. I feel bad. It pains me. Pains me to bad. say. You gotta get rid of Huke. I love Huke, but when I said I didn't realize anyone could, like I said, I don't believe anyone could fall off. He, he might work have as like a solo sub. I mean, he 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 might, he might have in this might, team. Yeah. I feel bad, bro. You know why I feel bad? I feel bad for Brezzy. And I feel bad for him because his stock as a player all this time in challengers and stuff is going to be deteriorated because of the fact of how bad he looks on this team. He is not a bad player. We all can agree he's not a bad player at all. He's just on a team that sets him up for no success. And this is going to potentially affect his career for the next year or two. He might have to go back into challengers and fight for a, a chance, a spot, a slot. Um, with now a new narrative on his on his name that he, look, he came on the team, replaced Illy, and they got... Basically, they're either the second worst or the worst team in the league. Heretics are them. Fucking throw dice, pick one. Who cares? Over I had a discussion today, Ace, with my with my stream and I was streaming. We've got good players sat on the bench, uh, sat in challenges right now. We got Wee Man, who I believe would have made this team, you know, better. Who is has been the one of the best challenger players in the world for the last three years.
who has been, you know, winning events, but winning challenger events. You know, we talked about Brezzi. He got top eight or top 12 at Boston. He didn't deserve, like, well, let's not talk about it like that. Either. He didn't deserve a spot on this team. Oh, yeah, we yeah, we talked about that for sure. He did. He, he didn't deserve a spot on this team. So it but just believes me to think that abuser, they, they've tried making it, you know, around abuser. I'm um, trying to make him more comfortable. And it, you know, it, it comes down to that friendship league again. You know, our cities isn't vouching for Brezzy. You know, you think Hughes walked into the facility. Hey, I found the, I, I found the formula. I found what we need. Brezzy from Clutch Rain. That's what's <laughs> it. That, 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 so that's that's that's, that's what we need. That's what we that's need. Brezzy from Clutch Rain. similarity between Miami and Surge is that the vibes are so dead. Now, like like I said, he didn't deserve the spot on the team. Not a bad player. Let's just get out of there. But he didn't deserve a spot on the team. He didn't make the team better. The team's chalked. They need a two man change. And if they want to dip into EU challenges, fucking grab Wee Man for starters. That guy is genuinely gross and needs a spot in the league. He would make any of these bottom teams better by a country mile. And if you know me, I don't really, I don't really give out gas like that. But that is one person who has been at the top of his game for years to come. And will he get a spot? Probably not. Why? He did. I don't know. Probably not. But we That's talk true. about we talk about Seattle. The team's chalked. Two man change inbound. Maybe a three man change. Two man change. I guess you just take out Hugh and Brezzy and bring in two American challenger players. Just get it over and done with it did, before it's too late. Honestly, you, what, what's the standings right now? Or what you are. They're, they're actually you, sick. You, you, you are sick. You, you, you're in a good spot. You're 15 points above Vegas, who are on a on a on a tear right now. If you if you really want to say that, just do it right now. Sort it out. I said Get it done. Be stuck on 60. <laughs> you said they're gonna be stuck on 60 I, for the rest I, of the year. They're gonna be stuck on 60. I, forever, I will be. I will be your GM for the next. I'll be your GM for the next week. Let's get this sorted out. Get Listen. two players out. Bring two players in. Get it sorted. Get it done before you before your year's choked. Because you cannot afford to have a bad major whilst the other teams below you, like Thieves, and um, yeah. like Thieves and Paris, are getting wins. Like it's just it. Like you just can't. You can't afford to have it right now. Another example of are the show continually calling Legion Paris. I'm not the only criminal here. All three of us are, are <laughs> actually guilty yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah. We've all done it now. In the last couple of weeks, but. It's the only thing I can do. S Seattle have two options, right? What Trey suggested, getting rid of Brezzy and Hook and bringing in two NA players, whether they're ex-pros ex or challenger players, whatever. That's one possibility. The other one is more rogue, but at this point, you have to commit one side or the other. You have to go full French, as in three French players and then Alec himself, or three EU players Bro, and then Alec. Wait, wait, I'm saying this is your two options, though. You only have two options. You go commit to EU now. If 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 Illy's not coming back for sure, uh, obviously they know the internals of their camp. If Illy's chalked for sure, you have to commit to the EU side because you've already brought in Brezzi, Abuza. You got to go EU team now. If Illy is a chance to come back on the sideline, then you need to get rid of Hook or Brezzi or both and build with the future in mind. But you've got to do it soon. Your last chance is basically letting this go till Major 2 and then deciding right after Major 2 because this 6th place slot is going to last... It's going to go away to blink of an eye if a change is not made very, very soon. I don't hate the idea of getting, like, Cobra and just, like, Godspeed, hope it works. Uh, it, 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 would, it would feel better, I think, than this team and way, the way Hook has been playing and the way he plays in this kind of weird mixed squad spawn not squad squad spawn type of system that this cod is he's just not the player you need in this setup you need a more of a you know you need more of a leader or at least some team vibes team chem some some good meshing together to start playing this game appropriately uh whereas this team like we've said before they don't seem like a team who's hanging out together kicking it outside of outside of practice um and they just did another red flag another another ga break so I don't even know what's going to happen with that. We, 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 the implications of that, <laughs> that might, could make this worse for the future too. That might have been Brezzy's send-off. Just like that? <laughs> the, the, another GA break? Another week of scrimmage? Yeah, he just dropped, dropped. It's like a mic drop, controller drop. I'm out this bitch. Shit sucks. <laughs> that was well, my final farewell. I'm not even giving them any advice. Like, I, you know. No, I that, my advice. They, they my, fell down. My, my advice is that if you want to keep Alec, 
you, uh, ab abuser. You know, if we talk about slasher and priest that don't work, that might not be working too. But I say, you know, if they really want to go down the French route, I don't think I don't think bringing Cobra in for Hugh does anything. I'm gonna be real. I really don't. I, I think you need to get. I I I don't want to go down the French route. Not everyone's Hydra. You know, it, we can't. Co it's like it's like when people picked up the you know the best thing for you know trying to be the next simp. There, there's no next simp right now. There's no next Hydra right now. Get two Americans in. Get Alec back. You know, feeling comfortable with the Americans right now. He's he's doing French lessons or whatever. Um, get him back. Get him feel. You know, I'm not saying Alec's going to be back like he was before, but I think you bring in two players. Maybe I don't know. Pierce or someone like I don't know who you could get to be honest with you. It's, it, I, I don't know what's going on, but I just feel like you're sixth place, you're in a good spot. And before you spiral out of control while these other teams are picking up wins below you, do it now before it's too late. The other thing I want to address too, because I've heard some chatter, is that JP on stream, I guess, said that Seattle never, never had any punishment for their GA breaks. Like they didn't lose scrims. Um, JP, I don't know if he's uninformed or something. I'm, maybe I'm not informed. But again, my source, my sources actually say that G, they did get only a week. I thought it was going to be a month per what we saw with Ghosty's podcast appearance when he said about the new punishments. But I guess the pros deemed the third offense, the quote unquote third offense uh, that Hoop did on Karachi on the car. They deemed that not to be uh, a snake. So they only got the one week uh, ban, of, ban of scrims. And then they played, I think, like, uh, only a few scrims at the land, but it was a week of scrims that were off. So I don't know JP JP heard, or maybe they were playing top challengers teams, but they didn't have pro scrims from what I know. So maybe I got to talk to JP and see what he knows. But as far as that clip goes, I'm... I saw that Seattle had one week chalk, but at this point they're back in normal scrims, normal schedule. Um, after the Brezzy thing, I don't know, but up until then has been, they have been scrimming since then. I mean, if JP's saying that, then it makes no sense to why they weren't scrimming. Maybe JP is out of the loop, or maybe they just didn't fucking like each other and didn't want to scrim. Because I was playing with Alec in UK times at like 10 a.m. UK time, which is 4 a.m. US where he is, or even a bit later. And he was playing, you know, late, saying that he didn't have scrims because they're, they're, they've been blacklisted. You're ex so they, that was the other follow up too. Again, like you had Trey come, Trey came in himself from the direct source was saying it, saying it too, and playing at 5 a.m. Uh, live. This was again a reminder of when this was. This was like I think the week back from the major, correct? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. It was early mm -hmm. on. Again, so it was early on. I'm not discounting the fact that how much of an effect that first week has. That's arguable. But they did have a point where they were not scrimming when other teams were beginning to start scrims up. So JP might be uninformed. Maybe he's in his mind, he's considering challenger scrims with them to count, maybe. But I don't know. I just want to clear that up because it was a point of, uh, you know, it makes us say, I don't want us to seem like we're ever trying to spread misinformation or we're saying something wrong here. It's coming from sources. Trey was playing with them. I was watching the stream myself. So, like, this isn't something we're making up out of nowhere. Seattle did have a week off. So, I don't know. Just want to talk about that for a second. But jumping ahead, though, jumping ahead, we only have a few more teams to talk about. Um, Optic, of course, the team that we must speak on. Um, let's jump to them. Optic, Rab, whoever wants to start this off, go ahead. I, I got my own feelings. I'll go with this them, one so. because, I, like, I think I get. I guess I want your guys' perspective and in the chat on whether you think this was a a good or a bad week in Wh some. Which ways. series you want me to open up on stream? Rocker. Or LAG? We can do the. Ro I think LAG. We do to the Rocker one earlier. I guess. Huh? Okay. Here's the. I got it. So, up. I think the LAG one was. If anything, to me, it wasn't more interesting because, I mean, that Rocker series against Optic, you only see one series of that a year. But I thought that after the way they won that series, that they would come out and just big dick LAG. But they did the same bullshit again, map one. And, and I've seen this with every Optic team now for the last three to four years, that when they play a map against a team that they think they should win and it doesn't go their way, at the start of the game, they just don't trade anything and go one by one and guaranteed loss. Same should happen against Rocker Map 1. Same should happen to, I mean, Shotzi got slammed game one. Okay, it happens, you lose maps. But it's just the way that they lost these first couple of maps against these teams made Optic look pretty shaky. 
Now, you've got to give credit for them bringing the ice back to win the series in the first place against um, the Rocker. But even then, I mean, that game four was a banger. They arguably easily could have lost that sub base. Um, and we know that Rocker have no game five eyes. And even this series, it wasn't exactly convincing. I mean, the control was not great. And even the skid row, they, they could have lost that one. And I don't rate Gorillas particularly highly at the moment. So... Yeah, a really interesting week for Optic. I think they've got to take the positives that they bounced back and showed good resilience. But I think what Optic really need to do is look at this week as if they've like lost both of those games and really consider the fact that those performances will not beat the top teams, what they showed this week. And Optic, of old would say, well, we won, doesn't matter. I don't know if the culture is any different now, but it certainly needs to be because a seriously top team looks at those games and takes a load of lessons. And I think that Optic with Kenny and with Karma should be a team inclined to do that. But I don't know if they're going to learn from these series what they should learn from these series. And the fact that Kenny is now there and Karma is now there and they've got Pred and they're still doing that run in and die one by one trade bullshit which they did in the last couple of years that cost them i think it's pretty concerning um so i'm actually looking at this week as more of a negative model actually it i mean we speak about you know the bottom teams not looking the greatest we need to speak about the top teams not looking the greatest too optic don't look fantastic they don't um they look very shaky. They should have lost to Minnesota. They clutched up very well. Um, LAG still look shaky. And then you look at, you know, compare them to New York, who, you know, we we thought, you know, look shaky at the land event. They've come back and they look fucking good. They look very good. Um, you even got Dashi in his interview saying they have no idea how they're winning these, how they're winning. Um, which you know, if we, we we try not to talk bad about optic, because you know people people don't like us when we talk bad about optic, um, green wall <laughs> scump and shit. But I think it's fair to say that if you are a true optic fan, that you can't look at these look at these matches as a as a good win for optic standard, uh, for the players that they have, for the team that they have, for the standard that they you know are supposed to set. Um, I feel like. With players like Pred and stuff like that, I've I've not really seen much of Pred in terms of how he how he reacts to games and stuff like that. Ace, I'm not really I'm not really on a on a personal level with him like that, mm-hmm. and I haven't really seen him at events like that too. So, but from what I see from when they play, no matter who they play, in terms of they could play the worst ranked, uh, they could play the worst team in the league or the best team in the league. Um, when he wins a map, he looks like the most. Um, he looks like the most passionate out of them, out of all of them. So I respect that. Um, I respect that from him, especially you know, as an Australian player, I, I like seeing it because you know he's probably the most hypest I've ever seen anyone get, especially after that three v fourteen clutch in a Minnesota. I've, uh, that raw, I, you could have probably heard that from over here. Um, but on a on a level of optic, you know, we look at them as the third best team. They didn't look good this week at all. Yeah, yeah. And we both roasted Optic. It's yeah. crazy. I've gone for the green light there in the back. Guys. Green all, baby. Dashy is phenomenal. Dashy. Great. Here we go. Might be, again, the best they are in the game. He is playing at a level that is unreal, and it's not like a Dashy we've seen in prior years. He's playing Hill Kitten. His slang is catching up in his new role. And he is a damage dealer on the map. Dashy is playing unbelievable COD. Patrick Ake, Ake's Price. You need to shut your damn mouth about the kid. He, he actually is... gave Dashy props. Uh, no, no, no. I watched it back. I, the recent, he gave props now. Yeah, because he said about the new role, you know, how we sat there and spoke about Dashy needs to just run and gun and be that guy that's fucking shooting. Yes. That's when he no, said that. That's when he said that. 
Yeah, that's what no, that's Little that's what Ace was saying. That's what Ace mm. was saying. Listen, and we all agree. I I listen. It was the belief of like trying to tell him what he has to do. The team was still gathering. They were all they were all playing. There was Shotzi was wasn't playing that well. Uh, Dashi was playing okay. He wasn't even playing bad at the time when he's getting criticized. That was my issue. He was getting criticized for not even playing badly. He just wasn't playing that well per Dashi standards. But now, fast forward, this is what we expect of him. He's one of the best ARs in the game. And I, re, people need to stop getting on people, on especially his back and generally players' backs, when they're not having a great week. You got to look at the trajectory. You got to look at the pacing. You got to look at the what his teammates are doing on the map. I'm very happy to see Dashi excelling, looking like the player he should be, and still being a beautiful hill kitten the whole time while he's doing it. Cook. I I I agree. Uh, best they are in the game. I think talent wise, yes. Um, One of the best. I, I, I can't take that yeah, away from yeah. scrap. I can't. You know, it's, it's yeah. arguable for sure. Now, you know, I feel like there's no like best AR in the game in terms of level skill wise. Um, I think you can only determine like best AR in the game or best player in the game based on team performances. And there's no, there's no doubt that Dashi makes this optic team better. There's no doubt that he's actually you know coming back from this whole like public slander that everyone gives him win or loss, and he's actually performing. When his teammates aren't performing, you expect it from Dashi. You expect it from an AR that even if his subs are dropping 0.9s, you expect him to be 1.1s, one you know, expect him to be positive, and he is doing so. So credit where credit's due. I don't know why everyone roasts him anyway. Actually, yeah, that 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 does you know piss me off a little bit more. Just to you know, coming from that aspect of being the scapegoat, just because. I guess he doesn't criticize the the fans or anything like that. He just lets everyone talk. Um, yeah, I, I, there's there's no doubt in my mind that Dashi makes his team better. There's no doubt in my mind that he is playing at a level where we we expect him to see. I just feel like Optic as a team right now are not at the level we expect him to see, um, especially this weekend. Hopefully next weekend it, it changes. Because I like seeing them slam teams. I like seeing. I, I want to see this. Who do they play um, next? Days, actually, yeah. So they the matches upcoming are actually pretty easy down to the last two. Their next two matches are Carolina and Boston. So they actually have a pretty easy setup, kind of a oh, lob going those, into this major. Look at those last two, there, baby. Yeah, the last two are the bangers, really to close it out. But at that point, it's just a fight for. I mean, essentially, top one to three slots in the winners bracket. I think that New York. Optic match is going to be the biggest, the biggest one. I think that's going to really corroborate who takes the best slot uh, in the Miami seating. So I think that match is going to be the biggest lost bigger. Yet, bro. Oh no, I'm saying that's why Ultra I'm not even. Still I'm not accounting for Toronto. I think Toronto is going to take the number oh, one slot. Okay, yeah, who's going to take the number two, number three? Who's going to where the rest of the teams are going to kind of place out? That last match I think is going to be the biggest difference maker. Who takes three or who takes four? We can talk New York now, to be fair, because... Yeah, we should. I, I guess I wanted to just discuss in general that last series, right, between FaZe and New York, because it was... I actually went for the New York Game 5 win, so I'm pretty happy at, at that one, because I was a bit sketchy about doing it, but I felt like FaZe's run online couldn't last forever. And I will say that, I think it was mentioned even in the chat earlier, that Celium this stage has like a 1.07 or something. Let's go Which is page. not like, oh my god, he's getting shit on. But it's like, Selium's Sell average level. is a 1.25. So, you know, it's interesting to see. Um, yeah, actually, can we see the numbers here? Yeah, I got them up. It's what I mean, yeah, Selium 1.07, draws a 1.01, yeah, simple 1.03, and a busy 1.2. It's phase, they're probably still going to be in the finals of the next event. But the way they lost these searches was definitely interesting for them. Um, getting 6-0 slammed on the high rows like they did, then game five they probably should have lost the game five a bit more convincingly as well maybe this series reflects more on new york and the progress they've made than phase because you know look phase have done this so many times where they lose a little bit online but i think it's just um it's just interesting that they haven't been playing at the level i would say lately that i expect i mean if you look at their last five games yeah 
I guess, to be fair, a lot of that. I mean, they've only played two matches, I think, so far. Cause well, look at their major, the their, their major two stats and what, what is fair to look at. Like, we should critique them on their major two but stats. They've only played know? a couple of games so yeah. far, and they played, um, they played Miami or something, right? So. Yeah, the biggest concern, I think, with this uh, phase team for me is that their S&D is slipping, right? They have one, they're one and two in S&D, and they're not, I mean... Let's go to the matches, right? Like I want to go, I want to go to the actual match to, to really talk about it. Um, against Heretics, right? It looks closer than it than it Even is. Even this one was a bit interesting. Yeah, it looked like closer that, than it know, is. That search. Six five search, right? Uh, their, their search is where I'm concerned. Early on, you had Draza coming out, starting out a little slow in his search category, but for it hasn't looked the same. Yes, they played NYSL, who are one of the best search teams. We can agree that they. Most people assume they were going to nuzzle the series anyways. So the record is early on, but it's concerning that FaZe is getting 6 0 by NYSL on a high rise and then 6 4 to Invasion. Um, it's, that's a concerning stat. When you have a team with Draza, in my mind, when Draza came on the team, I assumed their search wouldn't be as good as it was with Slasher, but it was going to be still pretty top tier and be able to compete with the top three teams. <laughs> But you're seeing them get slammed twice by NYSL. To me, that's concerning. Um, I don't know. Yeah, FaZe just... I like don't know if it matters what player you put in that role. It's just the same shit. Kind of, yeah. Like, I mean, Sla with Slasher, I think, is the only one exception <laughs> of that rule. They looked, they were obviously absurd in search with Slasher. But anyone else, it is going to be the same shit different day. I... Uh, the problem with FaZe is, is that who do you put... like? You know, I'm not saying Draza is bad by no means, but like if you took Draza out and we put someone else in there, do they get any better than they are? Really and truthfully. If you put any other player in for Draza? Obviously not talking like someone that's dropping a 0.6 or something like that, but... You could try like, Scrap. I'm... That's like the only player. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, like if you put Scrap in that team, does it get any better? I don't know, honestly. I don't think it does, and I'm not saying that. I'm I'm just saying I think like that is the best team you can. I I think that's the this right now is like the best team you can come up with, and then like obviously like, Optics got their best team, Phase got their best team, Toronto's got their best team. I just don't. I I feel like it just comes down to on the game tactics and how you're shooting on the day with the, with these teams right now. Um, obviously if Phase is all shooting, they're playing good S and D. I could I could have them taking Optic. Uh, not Optic, sorry, I could have them taken Toronto. And then, you know, I, I feel like it's just on the day COD for them. And the online COD, Rab, you know how it goes with them sometimes. Um, you know, I, I, they could go 0-5 in, in, in an online split and I'd still have them taken, you know, minimum getting second at the, at the major. Um, it, and that's not me saying anyone's bad. I'm just saying, like, I just feel like you just can't make a team like FaZe any better with anyone else you pick up unless you pick up one of these hackers from rank play. Um, <laughs> Jimbo, it's yeah, ninety nine kids, it, baby. It's it, that's just how it is, in my opinion. Um, with you know, Rab, you talk about their comms and stuff like that. They've got Draz, who's very good at comms, and you know, maybe the only person you put in there that can make them better at comms is like Kenny or something like that. But they, like you said, like you said, Ace, they also had Slasher. Yeah, that's why I can't discount the fact that they had someone like Slasher, who's clearly a proven leader. With comms, with S and D prowess, like when you have a guy like that, there's not many other people you can really put above them, above him, besides maybe an ultimate slayer. Draza is a pretty good slayer, but the only last exam, the only last creation or version of this phase team that we have left to make that we haven't seen would be just a fourth slayer, like super slayer, like like a, like gonna a scrap. Um, I mean, but Draza is basically that guy. He, that, that's what I said. I said he, you kind of have one in Draza, but like... I, I just don't think, like... I don't know, it's weird. Yeah, you put, you, you put there's, no, there's not enough kills on the map. Like, yeah. yeah. There's not enough kills on the map. So, so, like, Dra like, Dra like, Draza was that guy for Thieves. You put him in there, and he's just like... Wait, I, I, I just want to re I, I just want to reiterate to everyone that like hears this. We're not roasting FaZe for being... There, there's no one on FaZe that is shit. We don't think that. We just think that, like... They can't pick up anyone else right now. Like, even if they came second in the next major, even if they made a roster change, the best team they have right now is the one they have. Well, I have a thought too. I have a thought too. Uh, and I want to pose it to you guys, pose it in the chat, and just see what we think. You think going into this game, MW3, FaZe would have been better off 
holding on to Slasher? Do you, think, do you think they'd be better right now than they are if they just kept Slasher going into this year? When did they finish at Champs last year? I can't remember. Mm, Champs last year? Was it third or am I trolling? Was it second or third? I mean, Grand Finals was Toronto. Toronto, New York, wasn't it? Yeah. They got so third. Well, they were third, yeah. They, they got third. third. I mean, for, for, for FaZe, it's, you know, not the not what they want. They were two up first and stuff like that. I don't know. I feel like when you look at Draza and you, you see he's available on the market and how well he was doing for Thieves and World Champion and, you know, on the bias level of how well he's been performing the past few years, you, you, you can't really say no to that. Um, I also think there was probably some pace and issue with with Austin and Cell on the same team. We we've seen Cell go from Black Ops Four Cell to challenge everything to being a very I I, I don't want to say very slow, but he's definitely slowed down in that aspect. He's definitely turned more into a, instead of a flex type, you know, scrap type of slayer. He's gone down to an AR type slayer. Um, you know, you look at Scrap, he's zooming about the map chat and everything. He doesn't give a fuck. He thinks everyone's shit, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. um, Let me... But that, that's my point. That's my point with FaZe. I just, I like, there's just no one you put on there that makes it, that team better. If you have to drop At the one end of the, the day, the two maps they won were really impressive. It's just Kismet just like... I want to give credit to Kiz. Sure, Sib also got absolutely tucked into bed game one. Yeah. And then he really turned it around. Like, he started off the game not too bad, and then he went 3 and 21. 24 lives or whatever. Yeah, it was, 9 and 30 to finish the map, a point thirty KD. Pretty terrible yeah, map one. Don't see that every day. But he actually, to be fair, he kind of brought it back to nearly even at the ends. But because so far this season, Hydra and Kiz haven't been, and Hydra still isn't like Hydra 2023, which, I mean, come on, like, it's going to be that's tough what, to have a season. That's my like point. It's in, but like, it's impossible. Like, that's my, that's my point about the whole yeah. consistency thing. It's impossible to play at that level. You even saw Simp last year. Or was it this year in in stage one online? He wasn't. He didn't look the greatest person ever. I mean, I think it was a busy stage one this year. Simp was god like yeah, this Simp year. Yeah, Simp was crazy online. Oh, it might it might have been last year or something like that, where everyone was looking at Simp like you know. Question you mark. Yeah, 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 yeah. Question mark. Yeah. Does it still say infinity on the website? Ace, on yeah, it does. Two? Map two oh, says yeah. infinity. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, I, yeah, I want to give credit to kids. Credit to Dante too. If you take away Dante's map one, which is a nine and thirty, um, his overall goes instead to a 56 and 53. So yeah. he is above a 1.0 realistically. If you take out the map one where they're all just getting smoked besides Hydra, you take that out. He actually had a really good map. And again, Kiz, even map one, 18 and 26, 0.69. You take that out as well. He drops higher than a 1.2, a 1.12. I love this new analysis we have where we just ignore the map. We just, when they play <laughs> shit. We just discount them. We're like, yeah, well, that was an outlier. So we just. No, I, I, I think it works. I think, I think that works in terms of, um, you know, credit in fair, yeah, cre credit, cre credit, credit in how well a player has played if you take away their one bad map. Compared yeah, because there's definitely maps like a 9 and 30 is not representative of what Dante actually contributed in the series. It's literally not. Yeah. It's a map one that was mm -hmm. uncharacteristic and very... The whole team was getting pissed slammed map one overall. His 9 and 30 didn't help, but they were all playing pretty bad. But then after like that... If we get, I was, was going to say, like, if we're gonna, if we're going to use it against players that are getting pissed on, we've got to use it against players that are doing well too. Yeah, you both know? sides. You got, you got, you got, we got to play both sides if we're going to be fair about this. Um, yeah, no, this is it's a concern for FaZe that they're having some type of trouble with top teams. It's also FaZe Online... So, like, am I really concerned, like Trey said, or am I really concerned that they're going to come to Major and Cell is not going to be dropping 1.2s or that they're going to fall out of the top four, top three, top two conversation at the, by the time the Major comes around? Absolutely not. FaZe are still ridiculous. Uh, New York just happened to catch them on a Neslo, which is what was expected and people like, you know, Rab expected of them. So I, I don't think it's that big of a, an alarm to set yet. But it's something to note down in the pen and pad. And as we go into ne you know, next week's episode of Dope Check and we keep going on weeks and weeks here, um, it's something to identify if phases S&D I mean, don't phases, get better. I think, play Ultra next weekend. If we look at phases' upcoming game. Yeah, let's take a look um, here. Next I, week, I, 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 point, I, go on, I was, I was going to say that, that it, we don't look at phases getting beat by the lesser teams either. Like These are good teams that they're coming up. Like, they, like If they lose, it's always to a good team, in my opinion. It's always going to be to... An uh, an optic, a New York, or um, an ultra. You know, I, I will say New York is the fourth best team in the game right now. I'm I'm impressed with what they've been putting up. I think it just it's... makes things really exciting 
going forwards because New York during Major One, the qualifiers, they didn't look like we expected them to look. And then they turned up to the Major and got slammed. And I wasn't even that surprised when they went out. I mean, I'm pretty sure I picked Ravens to beat them in that losers round one. It's you not did. That anyway. You did. Like, you know, it, it didn't feel like a massive surprise that New York had a bad major one based on. Now, you would be very surprised if they had a bad major two on this evidence so far, which makes it it's great, right? Because at the start of the season, this is what we expected, that it to be effectively phase optic ultra subliners every Sunday with few exceptions. And who the hell knows who's going to win on that given Sunday. Um, at the first event, it felt like it was realistically only phase and ultra that could win. Now, it feels like we've got a different league and, and New York are looking to reclaim another trophy. Obviously, I've, you know, we've criticized Optic here, but they did go 2-0 on the week at the end of the day and showed some resilience and they're still not losing. I mean, they should have lost, but they're still not losing. Um, and then, yeah, phase of they play Rocker next phase and then they play Toronto. I mean, that phase Toronto match is going to be incredibly interesting. Um, obviously, a rematch of the, the grand finals. I will say this is the this is the chance where you're other every other team too to pounce on the fact that opti uh ultra have publicly admitted they don't like these new spawns. Mm. They think they're ass. And the maps are changes. Know. Like they didn't want Skid Row gone from search. They um you know, they didn't want Terminal to stay or anything like that. And they're not great on Rio, let's be honest. No, they've um they don't look the best on Rio when you, but I, I, I kind of, I kind of assume that to be fair. I don't feel like that Rio is a, a very them map. Um, in my opinion. Can I, can but I also highlight? I think, uh, sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, go for it, go for it. No, go I just want to highlight the fact that NYSL's schedule is Heretics next, Gorillas, and then Optic. So you can almost guarantee that NYSL is going to be number one or two going to this major. I think I would be fair to say that they're automatically going to take a number one and two spot. Toronto will take the number one and two spot. So then you actually have Optic and FaZe in the three and four spot. More likely than not, which is kind of crazy to consider. Um, it kind of makes the matchups that are going to happen after that much more interesting. When But it means that those matches all happen in winners round two, right? You don't get any of these first round top four battles theoretically yeah you don't you right. get more of like a people getting ripped or they should get ripped or big upsets happening a lot more now so i don't know this 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 next split is set up to be super just like oddly interesting a lot of people are switching spots in terms of standings at least in this major compared to stage one um you have rocker who's like zero and three and has a, still a tough schedule coming up they could end up Looking like a top four team, but like, you know, some people in chat were saying objectively, if they're zero and five or zero and four, who cares how close they make it? Doesn't matter at the end of the day. Even though NYSL look rocky, they're still four and oh. It's just so many narratives and buildups throughout stage one and two that are happening. Um, I don't know. This year, this year is just coming together in such an odd, fantastical way that every team has this, oh, their own, like, I don't know, own interesting narrative building up going to. Miami Everyone's Minnesota. got their own storyline, you know. Yeah. We, we we got we got Minnesota storyline of, like these guys are like the fourth best team. Look at this, and they just get like the most unfortunate shit happened to them, or like they they cause the most unfortunate shit happened to them. So we've gone from like that ace to like us talking about being top four to now they're zero and four. <laughs> and <it's> just, <laughs> like, and it don't matter. Then you got like, you know, Optic who have had like stupidly close games, how we like considered them the third best team. And now they're, you know, looking shaky against LAG, who you would expect them to just come out and club. And then same with Ultra, you know, 3 2 against Heretics. Um, yeah, it's everyone's got their own weird little storyline, and it's kind of funny now because I, after Major One, I wasn't really looking forward to matches because I just thought, you know, middle of pack, it's a grueler, and the top teams just batter everyone. But with these new spawns and new hills and new map sets, it's actually very interesting to watch COD again. In my opinion, if like if you're a COD fan, this should be your favorite time of the year right now. Absolutely, it's it's great. Yeah, and. After the major, there's another little gap, which you can say is bad because it's a bit of a gap, but also gives them the chance to put Vista in the map pool, which almost certainly will happen. But also gives the team's chance to make some more bloody changes, baby, because they will be doing that, as we saw after major one. The rad, the, the tactical rad pocket's getting fatter. 
the content <laughs> getting better for us, the dope check pockets getting fatter too. More and more to come up, guys. We are over three hours today of the show. We didn't. We I I called out we we're gonna hit three hours. These two thought yeah. we weren't going to. Bro, that went so quick. That's I'm not what I'm saying. I was, think technically nah. we're like two hours fifty nine on the show right now. But something like that anyway. Bro, basically three. But again, that's back to back three it, hour episodes full of content, Jeez. full of just conversation, hot takes. I I, I, I kind of want to check the TL right now. I don't know who clipped what or what it looks like right now because there were quite a few thoughts and, and stuff that was said on this show that I'm, I don't know. We'll see if it ends up on TL. Um, but thank you guys for watching. That is Dope Check episode nine. I'm so excited to continue continue watching these matches and for this upcoming weekend. Please make sure to drop a drop a follow if you haven't. Uh, make sure to follow all of us in here. Follow the Twitch page again. Friday we will be live again for the Dope Check pre-show for the C uh, for the CDL matches. Um, it, we will be live again, but that will be only on YouTube. So make sure to check out the Breaking Point GG YouTube page and follow there to watch the pre-stream uh, before the matches. Thank you guys for watching. This is Dope Check Episode 9. We'll catch you guys next week, same time, Monday, 4 p.m. Eastern. Me, Rab, and Trey. And I think next week we will have a special guest, so you don't want to miss it. Catch you guys next week. Thank you for watching. Good night.